Hello and welcome to this next iMesh Masterclass video. This is going to be another interior visualization tutorial where we're going to cover everything from the very beginning from an architect's floor plan all the way up to a finished render. Just like the last two videos we've done for the last two years, this one's going to go over all the topics that you need. But in this one, I'm trying to go for a certain aesthetic, which I keep seeing on a lot of portfolio websites for architectural visualization. And this aesthetic is a very soft lighting with a certain focal length and certain colors. This could be a very modern piece, but hopefully if you can follow this tutorial all the way along, you're going to have a very wow factor image, which you can for sure add to your portfolio and hopefully gain some clients in the end. Now, as you can imagine, this tutorial is quite long, but quite short for what I'm trying to achieve. I'm gonna go from an architect's floor plan all the way up to a final portfolio piece. So there's a lot to cover in a short amount of time. And in every single video, I always get somebody commenting that there's a better way to do something or there's a more efficient way of doing something. And if, if that's what you prefer, then go for it. I'm gonna presume that you have some sort of understanding on how Blender works. So if you find a better way of doing something, then please go for it. My specific topics, which I wanna cover in this tutorial, is gonna be more covering how to get to a certain aesthetic, the type of lighting which I'm trying to go for and the coloring and generally to try to make it look like these image images which I keep seeing online. All the tiny details in between which I might have missed or briefly gone over it in a slightly different way. If you think there's a better way to do it, go for it, please. But but I'm sure that you're gonna learn a lot of interesting things and some really good techniques on things to look out for when trying to achieve such a final interesting portfolio piece. Now halfway through this video, I will start populating the scene with 3D models. And as we are a 3D model website, we'll, we will be using iMesh assets. We do have a lot of free iMesh assets on our website, so do check that out. But if you find other free resources online, then please go for it. Uh, but we will be using iMesh assets to complete this scene. If you do wanna follow along exactly, then please do check out iMesh. Um, at the time of making this video, it is actually Black Friday, so we have quite a good offering at the moment. But if this isn't Black Friday, I'm sure we're going to do some sort of um, some sort of deal in our description for people who are discovering us through this video so that you can follow along exactly. But one thing I keep seeing every single week, even though I've been saying this for the last three years, if you're using 3D models for architectural visualization, that is not cheating. And I wish that I don't need to keep saying that. Um, I keep say, I keep using the same example. So imagine that you are a photographer and you have been asked by a client to photograph a living room. They're not expecting you to come and photograph the living room and also model, also build all of the furniture yourself. Uh, who in their right mind would ask a photographer to also build all the all of the sofas, beds, tables? You know, they'll be they'll be there for years before they can actually get the photograph. And that is the same concept with architectural visualization. You are visualizing the scene to try to make the scene look as aesthetically pleasing as possible. You need to choose all the right furniture, all the right coloring, the right composition, the right lighting. It's not about modeling the furniture. And I just wish that I just need, don't need to keep saying this every single video. Every single time I keep seeing comments on all of these various Facebook groups, Blender groups, uh, on somebody's architectural visualization piece, and someone comments to say, did you model this furniture? And they re they respond, no. And then somebody says, uh, oh, well, you're just cheating then. It's just, I just cannot, I just cannot. <laughs> By using pre-made assets, you're gonna be able to complete your work a lot more efficiently and your clients are gonna be much more happy. If you were to model your furniture yourself, there's a chances are that you're not gonna be very good at modeling your furniture anyway. So your clients are just gonna see bad, bad models. If you are a 3D visualizer, then please use pre-made assets. The benefit, the benefit with iMesh is that you'll get instant access to 1,500 assets uh, at the time of making this video. So you'll have an instant library that you can choose, pick and choose from and find something that should work for most clients. Okay, so there are six topics I wanna to talk about in this video. There's gonna be finding mood boards and finding the right colors, importing the floor plan and making a usable room, adding the key furniture items and materials and trying to find the camera positions and some basic lighting. Then going to the smaller details, the smaller finer lighting and the finer details, including materials and, and fine colorings. Before going to completing the render, going, going over some render settings, and then post-production and some tweaks. Now, throughout this video, also I have to apologize, I'm using a mechanical keyboard, which is very, very loud. So uh, please ignore that. I'll try to get a quieter keyboard next time. Right, I think that is enough of an intro. I think we should just get stuck into it. Um, if you know how to do certain things, then please skip to those parts. I'm gonna to try to remember to, do, to add those chapters. But otherwise, um, good luck with this tutorial, and I'm sure you're gonna end up with an absolutely beautiful piece. Please comment on the video if you're unsure on something, and I'm gonna to try to respond to every 
every person, every single peoples. And uh, yeah, good luck. Okay, so let's talk about mood boards. For everybody who is just starting out especially, you can't possibly know all of the styles, all of the furniture, and all of the details that you could possibly want in a visualization. There's no possible way that you can just have an understanding of this before you've even started. Even professionals, they will use mood boards every single time so that they can get an idea of the feel and the look that they want to go for in their finished piece. That's across the whole creative, all the creative fields and architectural visualization is no different. So that's what I've done here. I've put together a mood board of the type of images which I want to go for to give me some ideas of the type of lighting, the type of feel and everything like that that I want to go for. Hopefully I've already shown you the final image and if so, you'll be able to see by looking at this that it should look quite similar to this, quite a similar aesthetic. In general, the light is gonna be very dynamic with strong shadows, strong blacks, and also lots of highlights. The lighting is not necessarily 100% natural, but it still doesn't look unrealistic. It's almost like a photographer has come into the scene and placed very specific lighting into certain areas to give a certain look that they're going for. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing this tutorial as well. Also, the focal length on a lot of these images are gonna be quite high. They're gonna be using a focal length of probably around 60 to 80 millimeters so that it removes a lot of the perspective. So the images are gonna look quite flat, but to me, that is the aesthetic which I'm trying to go for. And there are various images here, here which definitely follow that kind of vibe. And that's what I really like in these renders. There's also certain renders like this one, which uses glass and the use of curtains, which I really, really like. And so there's certain details throughout these mood boards which I'm gonna pick up and try to use in my renders as well. Of course, the idea of mood boards is not to copy exactly, but just to get some inspiration and some ideas. Here is another one here, which uses also some glass, which gave me the idea of using more darker glass, which is what I'll be using in the tutorial. And we can also see when we're looking at these visualizations here and these renders that a lot of the images are very monotone. There's very simple coloring going on here and usually just a few colors. For example, this one's gonna be mostly black and gray with a bit of green. A lot of the other ones are gonna be maybe beige with some black areas. And that's the kind of look that I'm gonna go for as well. Of course, if you want to bring in more colors, then please do that. Um, but that this is the specific type of vibe that I'm trying to go for. Now, after looking at these visualizations, I also saw the idea of doing a studio. One of these renders came up and I thought that's actually a really good idea for the whole tutorial as a whole. So I try to split it up into three renders. So I'll be doing a living room, a kitchen and a bedroom as a full studio kind of piece. And I thought that would be quite fun to achieve as well. Now in the previous renders, I did actually use a, a mood board program on the computer, but just for this one, I've literally just used Pinterest because I think Pinterest is just very good at suggesting other images. If you want to download these images to your own computer so you have a direct reference, then please do that. Okay, so I think that's enough from this side of things. I think that you get the, the idea that I'm going for. So let's move on to the next step. So for this tutorial, we will be working with a rough floor plan that I've put together. Now I'm not an architect, so I'm sorry if these plans are not up to standard, but they should give you a good idea of what to expect. If you're working for a construction company, architecture company, or professional interior designers, there's a good chance that they will have professional CAD plans available. If they do not, please request this and they will try to get hold of them and send them to you in a DXF format. If they only have a DWG format, then you can use an online converter. And sometimes they will offer you the 3D model itself, but these are notoriously difficult to work with because they'll be made in CAD software. So don't offer them a reduced price just because they've given you a 3D model because you're gonna need to rework it anyway. But they can be a good point of reference to understand how the building is gonna go together. If there are no cab plans available, then you're gonna to need to go on site and measure these rooms yourself. Just be sure to measure more areas than you think, take photographic references with a tape measure, and that will help you later if you forget to measure something. Also be sure to charge them for this time. Often cab plans are filled with a ton of information, such as electronics, to water outlets, to furniture. You'll want to go into the CAD software and remove these layers and hide them before importing them into Blender. Now I understand that not everybody has CAD software, so you're gonna to need to import the file into Blender. To do that, you're going to need to make sure you go to preferences and go to here and type in DXF. Make sure these are both enabled and then convert your file to a DXF format. Then go to file import, and select that file. Now, as you'll see, it's gonna import a ton of information and generally it's gonna be really far away from the origin point, uh, but we can go into here. And the idea is that you're going to need to sift through the information and just try to clean it up a little bit inside a blender. And you can see also a ton of stuff is also parented. So you're just gonna to wanna to go through here and find the most important pieces. I think this piece is probably one of the most important parts. I also wanna select some of these architectural 
pieces and just try to get most of these in and then once that's done you can then join everything together and then probably delete everything else so now we have some easier cleaner plans to work with you'll also want to make sure that this is to the correct scale so in the original cab plans there should be an area which tells you how long a wall should be and then if you go into these plans this is a curve but if we go to f3 and type in convert to mesh then we can go over to here and make sure that we go in edit mode select here and select edge length now if we select an edge it should tell us how long that edge is so now we can see that this wall is 6.37 meters so we can compare that against the plans and check that if that is correct now some of these plans might be made in inches some of them might be made into centimeters sometimes it's a factor of 10 out and if that's the case you just want to select everything and just do s.1 loser but the idea is that you want to scale the plans to the correct size so that when you're working with it later on it's all going to work correctly right and as mentioned i have put together a little floor plan um it's not going to be architecturally fully correct but it should give us all the information that we need to make this tutorial if there are parts which are missing um such as the height of this recess i'm just going to tell you throughout the tutorial but if you get these plans from the architect and there's no information there Often the architect will also send you some sections which then you can use to check the height of certain areas um, and that will basically be a cut through the ob that'll be that'll basically be a cut through here so there would be one that potentially goes through here through these skylights and through this recess and then you'll be able to see how high these areas are but I'm just going to tell you th throughout this tutorial what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this file um, I'm going to put a link in the description and you can just import this in it's probably just going to be a dot blend for now Right, now that we've imported this, the first thing I'm gonna do is move this to a new collection and I'm gonna call this plans. And then we could just give it a certain color such as brown. So from the very first step, because this is gonna be multiple renders in multiple rooms, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that everything is organized and easy to manage. Next, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start working on the, the shape of the room itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press shift A and go to single vert and add single vert. If you don't have that, you're gonna to wanna to go to F preferences and type in extra objects and then enable those. Right, with that vert selected, make sure you've got vertex here. I'm gonna do a shift tab to enable snapping and make sure you've got it set to vertex mode. Then I'm gonna go over to here and then I'm just gonna press E and do these like this. Now this is where the door part is actually going to close and then this part is going to be where the door kind of overhangs a little bit. So I'm just going to do it from here, but there won't be too much visual difference going on if you don't, if you do it to these edges instead. This part of the actual wall is going to be a glass wall. Um, I've just put that as reference. Generally there should be some text here that would say glass, uh, but this is going to be not part of the actual structure of the room. So I'm just going to ignore that here and just go up to the top and continue over here. Then I'm gonna to get to the windows. Now we can see that these windows, they're gonna be generally the last part of the room before it goes to the outside area. So I'm just gonna to go to here and I'm just gonna go straight down and work on that. We will add an extra plinth here, which will be 20 centimeters high. And then we will also extrude this part out until the outside wall, but we can ignore that for now. So I'm just gonna continue going around and go like this. I'm also gonna ignore the recess, but I'm just gonna add some points here. These points are very helpful because they will add an extra edge, which we can then use to extrude later on. So let's just go like this and go all the way around. And let's say for here, we're gonna, oh, no, we wanna go straight across here. And then this is gonna be the kitchen. And this isn't a recess, this is an actual part of the construction. So let's go all around. And then select the last, the first one, press F, and now they're joined. So now we have the actual shape of the room. We're not gonna work on these rooms, so we can ignore them. We won't see inside them, but we can extrude an edge later on when we want to. Right, so the next thing we wanna do is work on the actual room heights and try to make sure that we then add in the windows and doors. So what I'm gonna do is we can first see that this is gonna be the ground level. Generally, this, these two sides will be filled in, but this is kind of the symbol to say the, the level of the floor is gonna be a zero, zero. So let's actually just move everything down before we continue. Okay, these are now a zero, zero. And then the next thing I wanna do is select this edge and we can see that it wants to be two point four five meters tall. And my units for this particular project are set to meters. If we go over to here, we can see the units and I've got it set to meters and that works quite nicely here. So what I'm gonna do is go into edit mode and select all the edges and press E, Z, and then 2.45. So now that is gonna be the height of the room. Now, as you can see here, my inside walls are actually red, slightly red, and that's because I've always have, I always have enabled face orientation. But for you, you might have bright blue and bright red, but what I have done is I've gone to edit preferences, 
And for themes, go to 3D viewport. If we scroll down here, we can see that we have face orientation back and front. Now that refers to these colors here. Now for you, it's probably gonna be bright blue, but I kind of don't need that information. I'm gonna turn that all the way down. And then I'm, for the red value, I'm just gonna set that to a low value like this. I want it to be that I can see it all the time, but it's not gonna get in the way. Um, and that allows me to always make sure that my normals are gonna be facing the correct direction. And as these are gonna be the inside walls, that's gonna be incorrect. I don't want the normals to be facing this direction. So I'm gonna select everything. You can do Shift N to make sure everything is facing the same way and then do Alt N and click flip. So now we can see that the face is now gonna be facing the correct direction. Right, the next thing I wanna do is actually add some, some heights. So we can see here the width of the door and the height of the door. And the same here, we can see the width of the window and the height of the window. Now, that, now those are the cuts that I wanna work on now. So what I'm gonna do here, uh, is we can also see that this door is also 200 centimeters. So what I'm gonna do here is go into edit mode, do control R, add a loop and bring it down to the bottom. So it's at the, directly at the bottom and then press GZ200, oopsie, <laughs> GZ2. So now that's 200 centimeters tall. And now we can see that we now have some nice loops for these doors. So with those selected, I'm just gonna press E and extrude those out. So now we have some doors. I will delete these bottom faces because these are gonna be part of the whole floor on the bottom. And now we can work on the windows. So we can see that there is a step here and the height of that step is 20 centimeters. And then, then the window itself is 210 centimeters tall. So there's different ways to approach this and it's, it's entirely up to you. You could add a loop cut here and go to the bottom and press GZ.2. And then you can, if you'd like, uh, join these together and add those plinths, but that's not necessarily so important. You can add the steps later um, and that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is now that we have this edge that's 20 centimeters tall, we can then work on the loop cut that's gonna go 210 centimeters up from that. So let's just add a loop here. It's probably gonna be higher than this point. Let's go GZ to this point and then do GZ 2.1. So now this is, now this is gonna be the height of the window itself. Now the window doesn't start until here. There's an outside edge. So this wall does go like this and it goes out to the outside edge. Um, but the window itself has an overlap. So we can see we can see here that the window goes into this corner part. So that's what we're gonna take into consideration. So let's go to here and then let's add some loop cuts here and go over to this part here. And then let's add another one here. And then let's do it for the other ones as well. Now these are probably gonna be different for your plans, um, but if it's not entirely clear, you can always ask the architect. Because sometimes they just don't put certain information in that's important. Right, so now we can see that this height is the height of the window. So let's select these faces and then we can extrude these out. So let's extrude this to here. And then if you wanna delete that face, you can. So now we see that this is gonna be perfectly fine. And you might be wondering, oh, but we haven't done the outside walls or the walls have no thickness, but that's not important. We won't see the walls anyway. Right, so now we have the walls, uh, the windows, and now we can work on these recesses. So there is a recess here, and there's also one here. Now for these recesses, uh, I'm just gonna use one of these loop cuts that we already have, because then that should be around the height, around the correct height anyway. So let's just select these faces here, and I'm gonna extrude that out to here. And then the same for this recess here, I'm just gonna use this one as well. Now this one, the purpose of this one is just going to be for like a bookshelf or something like this. But again, I just wanna de delete that bottom face and this one as well. The idea is that we now we can select the whole bottom face and press F and now we have the whole floor. I will just bring this up just a tiny little bit just so we can see them. And then we have this here. Now I'm gonna work on just creating this step. Now, like I said, you can use some of these loop cuts that are already there, or you could just make it a new object and it's not super important. Um, what I am gonna do, I'm just gonna make it a separate object here. So. Let's just duplicate this and use the edge because we have it already. Let's just bring that over here and then select that face and then just extrude it over here. And then let's do the same thing. Shift D, bring that over here and use this one. Right, this one is a bit too far over. So let's bring this over into this corner. Now, generally there will actually still be a bit of a step here, but whatever, for the purpose of the video, it should be fine. And then let's just duplicate this over because it's also already built and bring that into this corner. And let's bring this one over. Now this one's a little bit longer, so let's just bring this over here. Right, so now we have the steps and now we have those areas. So what we can work on next 
is let's work on the ceiling. So what I'm going to do is go into edit mode, select this whole top face. You should be able to select the whole thing and press F as well. Now we can't now see into the building and what is a useful thing is that what you can do is go over to here and press back face culling. So now we can see entirely always into the room and that's very useful, especially for architecture. You can also change the focal length. So you might want to go quite low so that when you're in the room, you can see quite a lot of the room um, because with 80, it's kind of a bit cramped. Um, so you could just reduce this and see inside the room. Okay, so for this next point, what I'm going to work on is this glass wall. Now this is a very technical detail and that the architect should send you some details and that might look something like this. So these are like extra details which show you specifically how this piece is going to work. Um, if they don't, um, then maybe there's a chance that they haven't figured it out themselves yet. Um, but for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this point um, extruded and then make the glass sit inside the extrusion. So let's go over to here and I want to add some cuts. So what I'm going to do is just press uh, K and add a cut here. I will do some snapping later. Let's just do this roughly here. You can also do this with loop cuts if you're working with perfect quads, but that doesn't make too much difference here. So let's just now make sure that these are in line with snapping GY and GX. I make sure GY and GX. Right, so now these are in line. We can now select this edge and press E and let's just extrude this a little bit. So this is where the glass is going to sit inside this little piece. Now this is probably not going to be 100% correct um, and it, the construction might be done in a different way but for this for this visualization it should work fine and you can't actually see into this detail anyway. Okay now the next thing I work on is these skylights. Now what we can do is again cut these out but what you can also do is do a boolean. So what I'm going to do is select these edges because these are already done for me and let's just shift D bring these to the top and then separate these. So now we're going to work, the, work with these and let's just join these together, select them all, press F to make sure that they have a face and then extrude these up, up a little bit, uh, make sure that there's enough thickness for the roof. Generally the roof thicknesses are going to be quite thick, so make sure I bring that up like that. Then what I'm going to do is just join that to this wall here. And then I'm going to select these here and press um, F3 and Boolean. And we can see that one of them has worked, but the other one hasn't. So what I'm going to do is also just bring these down a little bit, make the calculation a little bit easier to work with. Right, there we go. And these are the settings. So I've got union, fast and swap. But I don't think that one actually does anything here. Right, so now we have some skylights. So what I'm going to do here is just delete these faces. And that works nicely. Now don't worry that these aren't perfect quads because it doesn't really make too much difference. It will make some difference if you do want to do more cuts or do more stuff and you have to kind of cut things out yourself. But in general, this is fine. We don't really need to do any more work to the ceiling. So that's going to work perfectly. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is add the more architectural elements. And that for me is going to be some of the windows and doors. So what I'm going to do here is go to the iMesh Asset Manager. I'm going to go to my door folder and I'm just going to import this folder. So, and I'm just going to bring that in place. So we can see that this door is slightly too short. So let's bring this over to here. So this edge is against this edge. And then let's just uh, bring this over here. Let's go into edit mode for both. Bring this over. Okay, and then let's also bring this down to the bottom. View snapping here. Right, and is this tall enough? I could probably make it a little bit taller because I think this edge is here, so let's just make sure there's some overlap. Uh, something like this. Right, the door is opening the wrong way, so we can see that on the plans the door should be going this way, but that is not the case. So what I'm going to do here is select this object and go to object, mirror, and this way. So now I can bring that back over and now that should open in the correct way. And as you can see, we haven't worried about the other room, but we won't see that anyway. And if anything, there is going to be a little bit of a gap down here and we're just going to see darkness anyway. Um, but what you can also do is if you wanted to move this up just a tiny bit, so there is a bit more of a gap underneath. Otherwise, this could be scraping against the floor. And then let's just copy this over and move this to the front door. So the door is going the other way for this one. So the door will be opening in the opposite direction. So let's select this door, rotate that 180 degrees, and then let's put that in place as well. Now, generally the front doors are, go are going to be a little bit different. And I think I've made a bit of a mistake in the plans here, but never mind. That does go right up to this edge. But the doors are generally going to be a bit thicker. So what I'm going to do here is move this over here like this. 
and this is the edge I've created so let's actually bring this over a bit more like that okay and generally also the door will have more locks and other things but we won't be able to see that anyway so let's just leave that here right the next thing I'm going to want to work on is these windows so we can see here that that there is a um, Okay, I've just realized that when I removed these skylights, I actually did um, remove loose parts. So I'm just going to join those back together again. Let's just select this all and join these back to one object. Right, and then bring these objects back. Right, so the next thing you want to do is work on these on these windows. So we can see that one side is going to be opening and the other one is not. So we can work with that. So let's find some doors that, will, that look mostly similar. Um, and we do actually have some uh, eye mesh. I think I've got it under windows. Okay, and this one should work fine. So I'm just going to add a point here and append that in and bring that roughly into place. And we can see that the window starts at this corner. So let's bring that in, turn off snapping. I bring that in. You can just bring it into the wall just a little bit so that there's no edge here. And then let's go into edit mode and bring this window over. Something like that. Now let's bring this up and there we go. Okay, and now at this point, so there is a mistake that I have done and that is kind of also fine. That's also my fault because I don't haven't created the full plans. And these are the kind of things which you will also come up against. So you've done these plans and you notice that now the window isn't hitting the top of the roof. And you should then ask the client for a section so you can see how actually this window is constructed and at which point it goes down and where this piece goes. Uh, so that is kind of my fault, but I guess that's also part of the experience. You will always be finding these pieces which no, which don't line up and how they should, they don't work. Um, so according to my plans, they don't work. So what I'm going to do is just work with that um, and fix that here. So it's going to be quite easy. Let's just add a Oh, let's just add a loop cut here and bring this over to the end of the window. And let's add another one here. And just bring that over to the same edge here. And now let's just delete these faces and then we can, oh. And then we can just bridge these together. Right, and sometimes there will be a bit more of an overlap like it will go over something like this, but it doesn't matter if it's going to be entirely flush. So we're going to bring that over like this because there are sometimes pieces which are like a piece of plastic which go down and meet the window. So we can just say that it is that part. And I'm not going to be actually doing any renders facing this direction. So that's also, that's also fine. Let's bring this over maybe a little bit like that. Right, and we'll want to do the same for these ones as well. So let's just delete this edge. And delete. Okay, so that works fine. Now we want to work on the this window. Now this window doesn't actually have a door. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this piece over and move this over roughly so it's just against the wall. And then I'm going to But we only want but now we only want one side. We only want the piece which is the glass. So what I'm going to do is add a mirror. Move this up to the top. And then what we can set is bisect and then we can flip it. So now if we go like this, we can see that we are cutting into the window and now we have a perfect window. So we go, so let's, um, let's bring this up at the top and we might wanna apply that in a second. Let's just see. I've actually made that basically perfect. I think that should be fine. And then for this next window, what we wanna do is just duplicate this over because this is a similar one. There is just one window that opens and one that doesn't. So let's bring this over here like this. And this is a similar construction issue here. There is gonna be a little bit, the window, is, the window is actually gonna start about here and then there's gonna be like an additional piece which connects to it, but let's just bring this over. We, won't, we literally won't see this piece anyway. And bring this over here. And where I'm saying we won't see these pieces anyway, it is ideal to actually make sure it is correct the first time round but I'll be here all day if I make sure everything's 100% correct. Let's bring this window over. There we go. <clears throat> okay, now we have the windows and these things. We do see some weird um, Z fighting here, but that is simply just because I have the clipping too low. So I set that something a bit higher. Now it looks a bit more pleasing. Now for this window, we will actually have that open. 
the origin point is in the wrong place so let's just make sure we fix that set the origin point here set origin to 3d cursor right now we can do this uh, we will change that a little bit later now for windows it is very important that you make sure that you have the correct material so you want it to let in as much light as possible you don't want to, don't want to have any shadows so you want it to look like glass when you look at it but you don't want it to affect much in the scene at all of course real world glass does reduce does have some shadow and does reduce some of the light going into the scene but for architectural purposes that's gonna be so minimal that the outside is probably gonna be overexposed anyway that you won't really see you won't really make too much of a difference um, but what this does do is it makes it much faster and it renders a lot quicker so we're just gonna use this node setup which is already part of the glass that's basically saying if it's a shadow ray or a diffuse ray it's gonna be hundred percent transparent and it's very important that you add this onto your glass Right then, so now we have the, the doors and the windows and for this one you can add a skylight window up here but I don't think we'll actually see that anyway um, so let's just ignore that for now. The next and final probably construction piece that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add um, some, let's just turn off back face cling. I'm gonna add some light portals. So let's select this face, shift it. So let's select these edges, shift S, cursor to selected and then we can do shift A and add a lamp. Now, if you're watching this video when path guiding is available, I don't know if you'll actually need portals at that point, but um, let's just add these in anyway. And let's just bring this down and make sure that fits nicely over this edge. Okay, and then let's go to here and set that to a portal. And that's telling it that there are there will be some outside light and the outside light should be going into this room. So let's just duplicate these. I'm gonna do Alt D and bring these over and S Y. I did Alt D because if we decide to change these values for whatever reason of this light, maybe it's not a portal anymore and you want it to actually have light, then they'll all copy the same value. So do the same again. And then we can also add some over here. Okay, great. So next thing we're gonna do is actually work on the glass. So for here, I've represented that as a checkered line. Um, again, the plans will have specific details, but for just for this video, I'm just gonna add um, some some cubes. I'm gonna bevel the cubes and that'll be my glass. Now we don't, haven't, I haven't actually added in where the door is gonna be, which is a mistake on my part. So what I'm gonna do is just add in the glass and then we can add in the door where we feel like. Let's just add a cube. Now, according to these plans that I've created, it does go right up to this this edge, but it's probably not. It's probably going to go have a bit of an overlap, but whatever you whatever you want to do. And let's bring this over here like this. Let's just duplicate this, rotate that 90 degrees, and then bring this over here like this. And then we can bring the, bring this over. This will go all the way up to the top, so let's just bring this up like this. And now we have some glass. Now to make the door, I probably actually do that a little bit different. I'll probably bring this over a little bit. Um, actually duplicate that and then bring that over and then and duplicate this piece and bring this over here like this and then we can bring this up to the door height and then you can add the doors in okay then when you have that door shape created what I'm gonna do is just add a bevel and just give that a bit of a nicer edge. Right, the next thing I wanna do is add a door. And as this is gonna be a glass object, what I have found is that we do actually have an object in, in iMesh which will work quite nicely. And if you go to here, you can add a shower door which also comes with the hinges and stuff like this. So what I basically did is I was pen that in, just delete all the pieces which are not important, such as the shower and delete all of these edges because uh, what we want to have is these hinges. Maybe there's like this plastic piece which connects them both to stop any wear and tear. And we can do that. And that's basically what I've been working on. Okay, and I continue with that. And then what I basically did was, actually just to delete this piece. And then we can bring that into place and move that over 
like this. Okay, and then it will look something like this. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I basically just made sure that I overlapped these hinges so they go over the glass, and then I made sure to make move that over correctly. And I've opened it just something like this. These pieces are those plastic pieces. I've just added them as a connector. That adds a nice little detail to the object. Okay, and now for the actual material and the glass material. I will be using the advanced glass material that I created, um, and that is available over at iMesh. I uh, also put the link in the description. Um, but I will unplug the volume. So you can add a volume, and in a lot of my test renders, I was actually having a volume. I gave the glass some absorption, which basically made it so that the edges of the glass had a nice natural look. But because that will cover so much of the actual final render, and we want to actually see into the glass and see what's behind it a lot more, it made the render times quite considerably more. So I've just disconnected that for now. For the actual base color, I made it not fully white because I want it to be a little bit darker um, so that when you can see through the door, the bits which you can see through will be lighter. When you can see the glass, it'll be a little bit darker. Um, but the rest is the kind of basic values that I've got added here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object here and give that the, the same advanced glass shader material. If you're using the, the iMesh asset manager, then you can add that in using that. And that is basically what you can do here. And just import that and add that on. One benefit of this material is I've already set up the alpha channel so we can actually see what's going on inside it. The annoying thing is that we can't actually see any of these technical pieces behind these windows, which would be nice if Blender could release that so we can actually see still some of these details. Right, I think that is generally going to be most of the details that we want to add for the main construction. Um, so what I'm going to do is just organize these files and move these to its own layer. So let's select everything here and let's move that to its new layer and call that construction. You can name that whatever you like, but I think construction works for me. And these are all... When you import the assets through the asset manager, it will create its own category. You can keep those if you like, uh, but for this purposes of the video, I'm just going to remove it for now. Okay, now I'm going to give that a orange color. So now we have the plans and we have the construction and now we can work on the other parts of the scene. What I'm probably going to do just very quickly is I'm going to actually just add this floor because I think that's going to be quite important. So let's select this face um, and let's just bring this over. The reason why I'm selecting this face is because it's one that's already created and it just saves time. All right, and just bring this over here. This will basically be the terrace and bring this over here and we can bring that up as well. There might be a step here, there might be some other detail, um, but again, that should be details which you can see in the plan. But for this, that is good enough. And I don't think we'll actually see it anyway, so let's just leave that there. Okay, so I think we're in a good place now, um, and now we can move on to the next step. Okay, for this next step, which is gonna be key furniture, cameras, material, and lighting. It's just gonna be like the basic setup for the main room. So the main purpose of this step is to block out the scene and try to get an idea of what we're looking for, test out a few furniture arrangement ideas, and test some lighting. And the key furniture for me is gonna be the main block furniture. So that's gonna be like the sofas, the tables, the, the beds, like the main focal point of the room, because then the the rest of the room will follow where these pieces of furniture will go. And as I've already created this scene, um, I know where I want to have the, roughly the furniture and roughly the furniture which I want, but this is a very good time to experiment with different types. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by adding some of the seating. So I'm go, going to go to my sofa folder. Um, again, these are all available at iMesh. And I think I'm going to go for this one here and append that in. And it is going to be a little bit too big, so let's just scale that down. And I'm going to put that roughly in place. So I think that's going to be a nice place for this sofa, uh, but I'm not going to need this piece. So I'm going to delete that piece. Again, you can choose any furniture that you think will work here. Maybe you want to go for a more stylish scene and then something like this will be could work quite nicely as well. Again, with these kind of objects, you can scale them a little bit. They do have some play, especially these kind of sofas. They're going to be block sofas. So the, the part where the seat's going to go, they could be quite low to the ground. But obviously, don't go too crazy. But I think scaling them by roughly 10% higher, 10% smaller should work quite well. If it is a specific piece of furniture which the customer wants, then of course, you're not going to want to scale it too much. <laughs> Okay, so let's just move this one over here. I think what I what I want to do is get some light in from here. So there might be some light coming from outside that we can get onto the back side of the sofa from this window. And then this alcove will be where the bookshelf will go, but we probably won't see that anyway. So let's just leave that in there like, there like that. The next thing I want to do is add in a bed. 
let's just add this one in here. And we will be changing these the uh, materials quite a lot a little bit later on, uh, but let's just add this in here. Okay, and for the next part, I will be adding in a kitchen. Now we do have some pre-made kitchens and the one which I actually used in the scene, I'm actually gonna upload that to iMesh as well but I will just import that into the scene from my other test scene. Okay, so when you import the kitchen, you just wanna make sure that you fit these in nicely like this. So I have made it so that it will fit nicely into this edge and then this piece will fit into this alcove. I have got a little bit of an overlap here, um, but we won't actually see that from the angle that we're going for, but you can move that over. But just for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna leave it where it is. So these are gonna be for me, the main focal points. So this is gonna be important for me to now figure out where is my camera gonna go, and then we can work on lighting and work on the base materials for the scene. So one thing that I wanna do is make sure I add a camera and go into that camera. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to 90 degrees and I'm gonna lock that here. You don't want the camera to be slanted in any way. I say this in every video, you don't want it to be like this, like this. Now all the edges, they're gonna be sloping and that's gonna give the impression of a sloping or a, it's gonna give you an uncomfortable feeling. If you go on any photos online for architectural photography, architectural visualizations, they're always going to be square please make sure your cameras are square, otherwise it'll feel slanted. I have done a video, um, ArcVis Top Tips, uh, which goes over this in a bit more detail um, and to why it's quite important. Of course, you, there are some beauty shots which you can do like this, um, but generally, if you're gonna be looking forward into the scene, you, you want to have straight walls. Next thing I wanna do is go over to here and set this to 1350, uh, because I will be putting this on social media and generally in social media, you want it to be more portrait, but if you wanna do another kind of angle, then that also works. The next thing is that there's a lot of room on the outside of the camera, which is gonna be very distracting. I wanna focus exactly on what I'm seeing and nothing else. So I'm gonna go over to the camera, go to a viewport display and the pass per two, I think it's called, and slide that to max. Now in a lot of my um, references, the camera focal length is actually gonna be quite high. And for this kind of shot can look very aesthetically pleasing. I think, I think probably a value of about 60. And then we can move this around. Um, and now this, as this, oh, I've got to lock it. Now it is locked, we can move it around without worrying that it, we're gonna be looking slanted. And then what I wanna do is just move this into into space. Now, as we have uh, back face culling turned on, we wanna make sure we disable that right now, otherwise we're gonna not realize that we're outside of the room. And this is something which is very useful for architectural visualization, that we have the ability to clip and we can cut into the room. So if we slide this up, we can now clip into the room and we can see more of the room which we wouldn't have been able to with a standard camera. Now this does cheat a little bit, but generally clients from my past experience, if you're not cheating too much and you can see a lot more of the room, to them that's more important than not using any clipping and really trying to fit the room in and ending up with a super low uh, focal length. So I'm gonna play around with this until I found a position which I think works for me. Okay, now this is the position which I found. So one thing to take into consideration when you are working with cameras and where edges line up, if we move this over just to this edge like this, that's gonna to be too close. And that, that, li that edge is now gonna line up with the edge of the camera, which can be unpleasing. And you then become not too sure what's actually gonna be happening at this corner. So it's better just to give these edges a little bit of space. Um, the same over here. So if we go right up to this edge, it's, it's a little bit unpleasing and it, you don't really get any context here. So I'm just gonna move this over and make sure that there's no kind of edges which, over, which line up. Except the same thing for this. Let's say we close the door just a little bit like here. Ignore that it's not on the right pivot like this we get this edge and they line up, which makes it really hard to understand what's happening at this corner. And that's a general theme that you should be taking into consideration throughout your whole architectural visualization career. Especially, let's say you had a curtain, you had this curtain and it lines up exactly at this edge. Just move the curtain over a little bit. You don't want these edges to lead into each other because it helps separate the objects from other objects. Okay, so I think that this is a good position for this camera. And now let's work on some of the other cameras. So let's uh, duplicate this one across over here. Oh, and this one, I've also um, set the focal, I've also given it some uh, depth of field and I've set this to a value of eight, which is quite high. If you want it to be even more dramatic, you can set a lower value, but don't go too low. I've set this to eight because I want most things to be in focus, um, but then the things which are further away will be out of focus. And I've set the focal point just to be on the edge of this sofa. Because if you look, the, the eye, your eye is gonna be led to probably this point of the, 
of the photo. So that's where my focal point is gonna be. So for this one, let's line this one up where we want it to be. Okay, so I think something like this. We can see a tiny bit of the terrace here, but later on I will be adding a plant, um, so that isn't too important. If you wanted to work on this and if you want to go a little bit further back, then you will want to make sure that you include the outside wall here and you want to work on the terrace. I'm just trying to save some time. If I don't need to do it, I'm not going to worry about it. But if somebody is probably going to be taking over your project later on, it's probably going to be a nice thing for you to complete this part for them. So let's just bring this in like this and as I said earlier I have closed the door a little bit so that it kind of leads into the room and it brings some interest so over here we'll have the reflections of the outside scene and then the inside will be where the focus is and we'll have maybe some details around here and we'll have some lighting and all sorts like this so I think that's gonna be a nice setup for this one and then as we have a very lovely kitchen going on over here we want to see maybe into this direction here so let's let's also work on that I think actually on this one I've also changed the focal length. Yes, yeah, so this one is a little bit, this one's a little bit wider or a little bit actually more narrow. Um, but again, you can play with that to what you prefer. Okay, and then this is gonna be my last camera. And then let's just check where the focal, um, the depth of field is gonna converge. Is that the right word? Depth of field is gonna focus. And that's gonna be here. So that's about right. I'll probably move this over a little bit more. Um, because over here is going to be some chairs. So I'll probably want these chairs to be mostly in focus here. And yeah, then that's good. I reckon that's going to be nice for that camera. So now we're probably a good idea to actually label these. So over here, I have selected this camera. So if I press the um, point, uh, full stop button on the number pad, it will take me to that point. So I'll name that as the kitchen shot. Actually, yeah, let's write camera at the front cam kitchen shot and then write cam uh, living living that's right uh, and then uh, name this one bedroom then I'm going to select these cameras and I'm going to move them to their own layer and I'm gonna make that a yellow. Okay, now just as a little bit more explanation of what I wanna see in this particular shot. So this one will be leading into the kitchen. Now I could go closer like this and go further down on the focal length, but if we do this render, we then have no context at all where this is happening. Whereas if we go back, we can see this corner edge of the sofa. So if we want, if we go to um, the living room shot, we can see that this is the sofa here. We can see into the bedroom. If we go to the bedroom shot, we can then see the bedroom and we know, we know where that is. We can see a little bit of the kitchen, but in general that will be covered by a lot of reflections. You can't really tell what's going on in there. So for the kitchen shot, if we were to go forwards, we'll have no idea where that is. So we wanna make sure that that's a bit further back so we can see this sofa edge and now we get an idea of where this sofa is. Uh, so now we can get an idea of where this kitchen is as well. So the next step that I wanna work on is probably gonna be the materials and the mood. So after looking at my mood board, I can see a lot of the walls are gonna be like a darker color. And then I want to have maybe a lighter floor as a nice contrast. So for the actual wood floor, I thought that a, a nice white one would probably work. And I'm probably gonna go for this one here. And that is one is available over at iMesh. And I don't have this one yet, so I'm just gonna drop that one into my wood floors folder. So now if I go to Blender and just reload this wood floors, we can see that wood floor is here. Let's import this material. Okay, now we can see that adding this wood floor has now added wood floor material to the whole room, uh, but we obviously don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly add a separate material for each, and then we can work on what the actual material is gonna be. So I'm just gonna select the uh, top face, select by normal. Now it's gonna select all of the top faces, uh, but I probably don't want these alcove pieces selected and probably not these pieces down here. And then I'm just gonna give that its own material. And then we can now select the bottom floor as well. And just deselect this. And then select this top one as well. Okay, and then press Control I. Now we have all the other faces and let's just remove the terrace. Okay, now we can add that. And then what we're gonna do is call that walls and then call this one ceiling. 
Now what I want to do for these walls and one thing that I'm always looking for is to have a nice glossy map and a nice normal map. The diffuse map is not going to be so important because as you imagine you will be painting the wall all one color anyway. There might be some slight variations but for me the most important thing is going to be the um, roughness map and the normal map. So I went online and I found I look, found CCO textures and they have a nice grey plaster here which has lots of detail which I imagine will come out nicely in a normal map and also some nice glossy variations which could look pretty cool for um, for the actual wall texture. So this is the texture which I've downloaded and then I'm going to show you what happens after I've imported that. Okay so this is the uh, grey plaster, this is just the roughness map and the normal map plugged in. Um, as you're watching this video if you don't know how to set up nodes then I would recommend you watch another video and come back to this at this point. Um, but the most important thing for me is setting the base colour and I've set that to like a grey uh, of this value because um, I think that will be quite a nice value and add some nice mood to the scene. I've also then gone um, to viewport display and set that to the same colour. And then for the ceiling I want it to actually have the same material as this but instead of being a a grey, I want it to be a white. So let's actually go up to here, let's select everything, copy that with Control C, go over to here and delete that and do Control V. And then I'm going to set that to a lighter value. Maybe something like this. Okay, nice. So now we have a a room, we have the wall colour, the floor colour and the ceiling colour, but obviously it's not unwrapped, so that is what we're going to do now. Now the beauty with these kind of scenes is that it's going to be very easy just to do a quick smart UV unwrap. Now if you do have certain walls and you do and you are focusing on in on a certain area, it might be ideal to actually unwrap that correctly. But as this is just going to be a very quick scene and the the actual materials can be quite subtle anyway, we can just do select everything and do U and smart UV unwrap. Okay, now that we have smart UV unwrapped it, at this point because we don't really have any lighting, it's very hard for us to actually see how this tiling and how the texture is going to look in the scene itself. But we can set it as a very rough guide for now, just to see how it's going to work and check if the floor size is about the correct size and then go on from there. So what I'm going to do is enable Node Wrangler, that is Edit Preferences and Node Wrangler. And then what you can do is hold down Shift Control and click and then we can view that output directly. So we can see that material like this. I do actually have a HDRI turned on and that one is called in that one is called uh, Artist Workshop and that one is from HDRI Haven. But that's not so important because even with that turned off, we're just previewing these nodes anyway, so we don't really need any lighting at this point. But we can see that the texture size is generally way too large. So what I'm going to do is go over to here, change the mapping to something like 20. And we can see that there is some banding happening here, uh, but I don't think we will necessarily see that uh, because as you remember there is this one is just the glossy map. We might see that there is some roughness or glossy variations going in stripes like this. Uh, there might be some tiling, so we can see some repetitions happening here. But as you will remember in the finished scene there will be some glass going down here, so we won't even see the ceiling. And there might be some, some uh, lamps going across the ceiling which will break that up as well. Uh, but I do see that this is diagonal, so let's just fix that. Let's just unwrap that on its own and rotate that. Okay, so yeah, there's definite banding happening there. So we might want to change that a bit later, but just what I'm looking for at this point is that I don't want the texture to be too large. I w I'd much prefer it to be smaller. And what I'm looking for specifically is just these micro details. And they just want to be a very fine, very fine layer of detail happening across these surfaces. It, it will be very, very subtle. So we might not even see the tiling. So I'm just going to leave that like that for now. I'm going to do the same for the walls. Let's just view that output. That one is also very, very large. Let's set this to 20. And we can see here that there, there is a couple of tiling pieces here, but there will be a plant going across just like this. So that's going to cover most of that. So all that we can be left is nice micro detail. On the back wall, this is all going to be covered, so we won't see that anyway. But this should be a, just a nice point for us just to continue. Let's just make sure we remember to set that output like this. And then for the wood floor, I think this one might already have the displacement plugged in already. So I'm just going to disconnect that and just work with the bump map instead. So if I just view this output, we can see how that's looking. So this is generally going to be way too large. If we set this to something like four, um, when you're working for a client, they might specifically ask for wood planks at a certain size. But just for visual reference like this, I think that should be more than enough. Because later on we'll have a sofa going across here and then maybe something here and then the rest we won't really see anyway. So that is just nice for now. That is 
almost correct, um, but that's enough for us just to move on and just continue with the next step. Okay, so for the next step, we actually wanna see the materials. So I will be using a HDRI for that, just to bring in a little bit of light, but that is not gonna be the focus of my light. That's just gonna add some nice ambience, um, but it's gonna be not contributing much at all. So the HDRI which I've chosen is gonna be the one, and it's called Urban Street, and I'm gonna be using the 2K value because the resolution doesn't change anything to do with the lighting realness. Um, the 2K version works. If you can actually see the HDRI and it's in reflections or you're visually looking at it, then you'll wanna use a higher resolution. But for this reason, I'm just gonna be using the 2K version. I'll be using my iMesh Asset Manager and I'm just gonna click Import and that will import this here like this. Now, if you have some other nodes in here already, it's probably gonna shuffle things around, um, but these are, this is the main setup that you wanna have. I will be using the Urban Street because also that is gonna be for a street. Um, and as our scene will be actually going into an urban setting that fits quite nicely. And also there is a very overcast sky. I don't really want any, to have any direct sunlight with this HDRI. It's just meant to be for um, background ambience. But what I do wanna do, and that's gonna be a little bit different, is that I'm gonna change the saturation value from to zero um, and that will make a black and white scene because what I want to have in this particular scene I'm going for a very specific aesthetic which I've seen in other references and I want to have as much control as possible over the lighting so for this reason I just want to use the HDRI as like a more ambient lighting um, that's not going to be contributing any color information to the scene so I'm just going to set this on like this we can roughly kind of see how that's going on. Let's just turn it off. And we can kind of see how that's doing. It's not gonna be contributing much to the scene, um, but the way that I will be making light into the scene, mostly is gonna be using area lights. Now, I know some people are probably gonna be thinking that you cannot get realism unless you're using HDRIs only, but that is just not true. I see a lot of people online and they get stuck in using the same lighting method. So they, they think that they can only make realistic renders with HDRIs um, and they don't try anything new. And the reason why I'm making a big point with this is that I want people who are watching this tutorial to try something new. There are so many different ways to get lighting into your scene. There could be HDRIs, area lights, sunlights, the Nishita sky texture, point lights. There are so many different ways to add light into the scene. Try something new, because then you might find a style which you much more prefer. You might prefer to use area lights because you have more control over it. And you can still get realism. Most people have probably seen a brochure with furniture. Now these brochures are most of the time photographed inside in a studio with no natural lighting they have artificial lighting set up. So they have their own form of area lights. They have area lights to, to focus the light on specific areas of the scene to make it look like it's actually lit from the environment. So a normal person looking at a visualization which uses the same method of lighting, such as a studio lighting with specific area light placement, their eye is tricked into thinking, oh yeah, I'm very familiar with this type of lighting. This must be real. So the eye is very familiar with this kind of lighting and that's what I'm gonna be using for this. I'm just gonna be using area lights to place very specific specifically the lighting which I want to go into the scene. Now, if you just want to use a HDRI, go for it, but there is a very specific look which I'm going for and that will involve area lights to be lighting most of the scene. We can see already that there's some nice ambient light coming from outside and you'll find at the very end point that it will still be a very realistic render and I hope that you learn something new. Just don't get stuck in one way of doing lighting, try new things and you might find something which you really enjoy. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a big area light. And these are gonna be more of the main focus of the light. So you can grab this point and you can point any face and it will face that way. And we're just gonna maybe bring this down actually, make this a bit bigger. And I want that to be shining into the room. Like this, and we can just see how this looks. And there's one thing which is now part of Blender, and that's really cool, and that's being able to change the spread value. So let's try something like 46. Now we can see we have much more angular lighting with stronger shadows. So if we check that out again, if we check here, there's some like a nice sharper shadow here, but if we set this back to 180, there's still a sharp, sharper shadow here, but it kind of gets lost. Uh, very quickly, there's no more detail left. So if we change this to something like 10, we can see that the shadows are much stronger. So let's go for something like 46. And then I also want to copy that over to the other side. So I'm going to go into the camera view, let's do a test render and watch this render as we move the other lighting over. So let's do 
click this one, do Shift D. I'm going to do Shift D because I might want to change the values of these later. But now we can see we're already adding light into the scene. Okay, I've just changed these values just a little bit. And this is, you can say, kind of the direction where the sunlight will be going because this, this will be quite a concentrated beam going in this way. We can say that the sun or the main brightness of the sky is going to be facing this direction. Let's go back into the camera view where we actually have some of the other objects in the scene. And we can see where we might want to place some more lights. Okay, so one thing that I would quite like to have, I want to have some focus more here on the sofa and maybe some more light going into the bedroom because the bedroom is very dark at this point. But we can already see that the moody aesthetic which I'm going for is already starting to be apparent. But it is nice to have some nice contrasted areas where it's maybe a bit brighter, we can actually see what's going on. So for that, I'm going to actually duplicate this one, maybe make it a bit smaller. And then I can actually make that face this sofa like this. Actually, just do something like this and face that into the scenes. This is hitting the sofa and it's gonna be same concentrated beam. Okay, and then we see if we can actually see this one in the scene. Okay, there we go. So now we have a really nice focus going on here from this so from this light here. So if I move this other way, it's gone. If we bring it back, we can see it. It might actually be worth also turning on the denoiser here at this point, because it helps clean up um, and we can see the materials and lighting a lot easier. Okay, and then I'm probably gonna to wanna to do the same over here. Let's just move this one over. Okay, and I've got this light here. Okay, now this light is adding a bit more focus on this part of the bed, uh, but I think we want some more light. So I wanna bring some more light into the actual scene. And then let's just bring this round. Let's set the value to maybe a bit wider, something like this. And now that's adding a bit more light into the back of the room. Because at the back here, I'm also going to add some cabinets and stuff like this. So I think that's going to be nice in the scene. But we're going to have to be careful. So this is actually going to be hitting the ceiling here. So if we go to the actual room, we will be able to actually see where the, where the light is actually going to be intersecting with the ceiling. So that's one thing to keep note if we're going to see it later on. But I don't think we're going to see it from now on. So I'm just going to use it as a beauty light. Okay, so this is going to be a really nice look and I think this is coming along quite nicely. Okay, and the next part I want to maybe add some more light in here because this wall is going to be way too black right now. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this light from here and bring this over like this, make it a bit smaller maybe and bring that over here. Maybe make it a bit taller like the glass itself. Okay, and let's maybe make it a bit brighter like 20. Okay, so now we can see this actual wall effect here. Um, we can actually see how this is going to look in terms of Actually, let's turn off the denoiser so we can see the detail. So we can see how the, the final look of this and if the normal map is gonna be too strong or not. Um, but I think I think that's probably gonna be fine. I might actually wanna reduce that a little bit. Uh, uh, to the walls. Maybe to 0.5. Okay, I think that's probably gonna be fine. You can see that there is some detail on the wall. You just don't wanna have a completely smooth wall because that is very unrealistic. Um, generally, there is going to be some variation there, so that's going to be fine for now. Okay, so this is looking really nice. I think this is getting the aesthetic which I'm looking for. The next thing I want to do is now start adding some of the smaller details, some of the smaller lights, change some of the smaller materials, and in general start populating the full scene, because I think that this look that we're getting is very close to what the look is that I'm going for. So. I think that this next step is probably going to be the most fun part, to be honest. This is the part which I enjoy the most. The whole construction is done. I've got the lighting and the camera, which I like. So now I just want to work on fine tuning it and making it interesting. And that is a good concept to go for. So you want to block it out and get work smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller details, smaller details until you have a finished product. Actually, before we move to the next step, what I'm going to do is actually just move all these objects to the same, to the same collection so that everything is nice and organized. Okay, move these to new collection, call this lighting. Call this lighting. And we can set that to another color, maybe orange. Oh, let's change this to blue. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'll also select these sofas and move these to its own layer called, um, let's say, um, living room. Let's select this bed and move this to new collection called bedroom. The next thing I'm going to do is work on, again, some of the more bigger objects and then I'm going to work my way down to the smaller objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a coffee table. I'm going to go to tables and coffee tables and then I'm going to select this one here. So this is a nice one which uh, we recently released. Now most of these objects are going to be coming from iMesh. Um, 
and this is going to be the paid subscription and if you do want to follow along exactly like i said uh you're going to want to get the subscription to imesh um there are obviously other free resources online and things like this you might be able to model yourself um but when you're doing architectural visualization, you're not expected to model the furniture yourself. It's a waste of time, use pre-made assets, and then you can very quickly build the scene. Architectural visualization is about the visualization, the cameras, the comp composition, the materials and lighting, not about your modeling skill. If you wanna follow along exactly, I'd highly recommend you get a the subscription. If you're watching this at Black Friday time, we have a Black Friday deal going on. If not, then there will be another unique code in the description, which will be having another offer. Check that out and you should be able to get this at a discounted price just because you're very nice and you've been watching this tutorial up to this point. So yeah, I'm gonna continue. If you don't have this exact furniture and you don't wanna buy iMesh, that's also fine. Just find other sources to get 3D models and I'm gonna talk you through the reasons why I'm gonna go for these specific items. So then you can also choose appropriately. So this is the coffee table, which I'm gonna go for. Um, I'm probably gonna make it a little bit smaller and move it over a little bit like this. The reason why I chose this one is because it already has like a frosted dark glass. The same, and this can be a similar effect to the glass here. So what I wanna have is some details which kind of match each other. So this is gonna be like a dark glass and this is gonna be a dark glass as well. So I wanna make sure that they, they are similar. Let's just make this camera a little bit smaller so it's a bit harder to see. Okay. And then the next thing I wanna do is also, there's something here, there's like some empty space. And one way that I like to fill empty space and that is with stuff like plants. And of course we have some plants. So let's go into our plant library and I will be using this Monstera and I'll append that in. Now this one does actually come with like a fur on the block. Probably don't wanna see that. So let's just hide this from the viewport and it should make things a bit quicker, but it still might be a little bit slow, but this is a very beautiful plant. So let's just use this and drop this into place. So we want this to be on the back wall somewhere. So I think, I think a placement like this should be fine. Uh, I did make this plant so that it can actually go against an edge, which is one thing which I freaking hate when I download plants online. They end up being so big and you end up having to put them like two meters away from the wall so that there's actually some space. So I did make it so it can actually go up against the wall and hopefully people can appreciate, can appreciate that. Um, and what I'm doing here, I want it to be going off the camera so it is leading interest in this direction. Um, but I don't want it to cover too much of this area. This edge might be hitting too close to this edge, so maybe some overlap would be a little bit nicer. Um, maybe something like this. But I think that should be quite nice. We can do a preview render if you want to, and just see how this is coming along. Okay, so one thing that I'm immediately seeing, and that Monstera is almost pitch black, so we need some more lighting. And one way to do that is actually add some more actual physical lighting. One thing that I like, and one thing that I see in some of my references, and that is using some spotlights. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add some um, spotlights. Probably gonna go for this one here. I'm just gonna pen that into the scene and bring that up. Now, what you can do is edit this quite easily. So you select this object, and then we just wanna select these. I'm actually gonna edit that one here and go into this mode here so I can see what's going on. And then I can bring this over into place. It's roughly where I need it to be. And I also want it to be completely flush with the, with the ceiling. So let's bring it down just a little bit like this and then we'll do some cuts later. And then I just wanna place these and, and make these ones connect. So what I'm basically gonna do is do this. Actually, let's uh, also select these points here. and rotate this. And then I'm basically gonna make, gonna make them connect like this. And I wanna create like a cross here. Uh, I'm gonna do that now. I'm not gonna waste the time in this video. Uh, and I'm gonna come back in a second when it's done. Okay, so this is how it's gonna look. But now we also want, we do wanna see this, uh, this piece. Let's actually bring this piece down a little bit more. So we wanna make a cut in the ceiling here. So I'm just gonna select these pieces and the ceiling. I'm gonna go top view and then we're gonna just do some really quick cuts. Okay, now with these cuts created, I'm just gonna select the faces. This one's here, and then I'm just gonna extrude them up. Okay, now these are inset. There is a little bit of a join here, but we won't really see that too much anyway. 
Okay, now with these lights, the beauty with these spotlights which are created and they're available at iMesh, we can really point them in any direction that we like and they'll follow, they'll look nice. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the angles which I have. So I have one light coming down here. Now that's gonna be hitting this edge of this sofa here. And I'm gonna have one spotlight, which is the reason why I created this in the first place. And that is to be hitting this uh, Monstera leaf. And then I've also got another light coming over here. This one is gonna be hitting this coffee table and that's gonna be creating some nice lighting against this edge. And then there's also this one here, which is gonna be facing and also contributing to that, that nice light, which is gonna be shining in about the same point. Now these lights, they do also come with an IES light, which is more realistic and it has a nice fall off, just like a normal spotlight. And we can kind of see how that's gonna look here like this. You can quickly see that these lines are quickly adding up, so it's just nice just to quickly turn this off if you want to. Okay, so we can now see these effects going on here. <clears throat> if you, th One thing that I really like about these spotlights, and that is that this glow is very realistic. When you import this for the first time, you might find that this emission value is just too strong, like this, and it's just gonna end up blowing out the whole thing so you can no longer see the detail. But I like it to be set like this, so it still looks realistic, but you can still see this nice details going on here. And those are also the details you want to also remember. If there is detail in that light, you want to be able to see it. Otherwise, if it's completely blown out, it, you know, it's not really contributing much. Okay, so this light isn't actually doing much, this Monstera. So I might add, need to add another light here somehow. Uh, but we can see that there's a nice leading edge against this coffee table. There's a now nice light here, and it kind of looks like the lights are on like it should be, which is kind of giving like a nice evening vibe now. And these lights also, I really like having a value of uh, 4,800. So going throughout this tutorial, I'm gonna be using all of my artificial lights inside. I could be with a value of 4,800. If there is like a light, which is gonna be more of a, um, like I'm gonna add a light here, which is gonna be more of a focus on highlighting an object rather than an actual artificial light, I will make that as just white. Okay, so how can I add more light to this? And like I said, I'm gonna add a highlighting light. So what I'm gonna do is just go to here and let's just change the view down so we can actually see. I'm gonna add a new area light and I'm gonna move that over and focus that on here. Okay, so in the end, I've gone with a value of two, just a little bit of a highlight if I turn that off, it's gonna be black. If I just set that to two, it's quite nice. And I've gone again with the same kind of spread, like a 46 spread. Now you'll also notice, I've just imported this from the other, from another scene, and the color of the Monstera is also different. So I'm gonna talk you through that now. So what I basically did was, the color of the Monstera is nice. It's a very realistic green. But what I did find is that it didn't really fit the mood of the scene and the green was just too overpowering. So for these leaves, there's different materials here. I basically just tweaked the material a little bit. So you can see here, I've added a hue saturation, which is gonna be going into the color, which is gonna be going into the base color. This is just a bit of dust. as like an additional shader to give some realistic dust on the Monstera, uh, but the actual color information itself, this one here, I want it to be a little bit darker, a little bit desaturated, a little bit darker, and also the hue uh, to be a little bit different. So these are the values which I've got here. Basically just copied this across to all of the leaves. Here. So I think before it was like one and it's just a bit too much. So that is just one thing that I've already controlled. And that is also a concept which we're gonna be doing quite a lot here. We want all of the colors to work in harmony. Make sure that you're looking at your color swatch. If there's just one color which is just doesn't fit in, you just wanna tweak it. You just wanna work with it and see if there's another color which you can pull out of that specific material. Okay, so I think that's looking really nice. I think that we're getting a really nice vibe here. And talking about materials, so one thing that I also like to do throughout my scenes is I like to make sure that all materials are very similar throughout. So if you're using a nice material, this is a, this is one of my favorite sofa materials that we've created at iMesh. And I think that it just has a really nice color which fits this vibe. This sofa in the back has a different material. Let's try and connect them and make it so that they have the same materials. And then that should work a bit better. So let's click on this one and see what it is. It's called beige fabric. Let's just remove this so it's easier to find. And click this one and Let's just find out what the material is. Let's go. So this one, okay, so it says soft leather and then let's just change this to, was it beige fabric? Beige fabric, yeah. Okay, so now these have the same material. So if we do another preview, we can then see, I'm gonna turn on denoising so it's a little bit quicker. We can then see that they now should work a little bit better together. So this sofa is now quite lighter 
um, you might argue that there's a bit too they're a bit too close to here but I think because it's in a darker setting there's still a bit more of a difference which which looks quite nice but now we can see that this bed also fits into the scene a lot nicer if it's the rest of the vibe that we're going for okay so now for the next step so one thing that's a big open area and that is this big piece in the back there's a lot of empty space there so we want to fill it with some details again looking at my references there are some really nice shots which are using some sorts of um, clothing closet which has some nice detail so that's what we want to go ahead and do now so following along as previously i'm just going to go to here and set this to storage and let's choose one so this one i already know works so i'm just going to append that in here let's bring this up to the floor level and then let's bring this over let's just bring this like this and then I'm just going to do Alt D and bring that over because I want this to be covering both. This piece is going in the wall, but I don't think we'll actually see it here. So that's also fine. If you want to make that perfect, that you should probably do that and make that only have this many doors. But for this reason, I think that it's fine. So now if we do a render preview, this one does already come with lights inside. So it should already highlight quite nicely. And as you remember, we also added a light in here, which should be adding some nice light onto this area too. Okay, so that is already instantly added some really nice detail to the back of this room. It's adding some interest, but we're not finished yet. We want to go into the smaller details. So maybe like a bedside cabinet, uh, maybe some lighting here, some plants and some curtains as well, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And then I'll be back in a second once I've added those objects in. Okay, so now I've added in those objects. So what I've basically done is I've added a few curtains because I think curtains, they break up this area quite nicely. It is a bedroom with glass walls, so they probably want some privacy. Um, even though this is a studio apartment, you know, they might, maybe they have guests um, and then they, they can spread over here if they, if they need to. I've added this one over here and I've just crumpled this up a little bit. The, the good thing with curtains is that they have a lot of, because um, they're fabric, they have a lot of play in them. So you can stretch them a little bit, you can, shrink them a little bit and they still will look like a curtain and look quite nice so i've added those pieces in i've also added in this light which is also i mean everything is available on imash uh, but i quite like this light because it's like a nice soft light that adds some interest over here and i've also added like a book and these thing this thing here and again uh, this bedside cabinet and one over here now i did realize that there isn't actually enough space over here for the other bedside cabinet but Maybe they like they prefer to sleep on this side of the bed. But as this is your own piece, you can if you want to stretch this piece out further if you want to. But I've hidden it basically. We can't see it anyway. So that's also fine. Um, over here, I've added a pampas grass because I think personally they're my favorite ones. I always think they look great. And if you just look at these colors, how perfectly these all work together. It's a perfect plant that fits in a lot of situations. I've added some uh, candles that sit in the front and I've just tweaked their, their colors a little bit. I've made them a bit brighter because they were just a bit too dark. Um, so then they kind of fit a bit nicely with this, but the colors also contrast this a little bit more. I, I'd probably tweak these. Maybe you could tweak these a little bit so that they do, they are more similar. But I think in general, that is a really nice touch. And lastly, there's a book here because somebody who sits here likes to take notes about something. But in general, you want to make sure that you add some elements which make it really feel like somebody actually lives here and maybe there is some story to tell. So um, shoes are a good one. You can add some shoes here, like some maybe somebody has just sat here and maybe they've just left an item and they've just gone off to the other room. Add some sort of interest here and that is believable or makes it feel like you could just jump into that scene. For example, if this was completely square, that might look less pleasing. You know, that's just too neat. Maybe just turning it a little bit could add some really nice variation. So now I think that, they, I think that this is almost done the ceiling, I keep looking at it. It looks really disgusting at the moment. I, I'm probably going to tweak this a little bit, but um, I'll come to that in a bit. Um, I think that this is maybe a little bit too dark. There is a light on here, so it would be nice if there was some sort of light being cast down here. And I think some sort of cushion could be nice here because it wants to be a bit more comfortable, I feel like. Um, I think that that is probably fine. So let's add a cushion and let's add a light here and then I'll be back in a second. Oh, actually the cushion. Um, I'm probably going to look in seating, see if I have one already made. Because this is going to be quite a minimal scene, so... 
Yeah, I'm probably gonna add this cushion here. I'm just gonna import this whole sofa and then gonna extract the cushion itself and then place that in. Okay, now when you import cushions, there's one thing to note so is that you'll probably find that the cushion doesn't fit exactly onto the sofa that you're trying to work with. So there's a thing called proportional editing. If you press O, you can enable this mode and you wanna make sure that you have it set to smooth and then you can adjust this cushion using the middle mouse wheel to scroll this out. You can then move this so that it fits nicely onto the, onto the, the, the object. You don't want there to be a too big gap and you don't want the, the gap to be non-existent. One thing that I do find with fabric materials is that if there's just a little bit of a gap, it can look a bit more realistic that it kind of leads underneath and has a nice uh, dark shadow underneath, but not too crazy that it looks disconnected. So I think that is a, a nice touch and it should already be, look at the material, um, it should already be a nice material and color which fits nicely into the scene anyway so that's good next thing i want to do is add this light okay so this is the light that i've gone for again it's an interior light which is going to be more of an artificial light so i've set the value to 4600 i've set the spread to 60 so there's a bit of a spread but that will also mean that they should get some on the on the curtain here now this won't be 100 percent realistic because there will be a lot of light going down but not up or to the side which you might expect from this light i still find it doesn't look unrealistic and it still adds just a really nice touch and a bit of glare and light to this object. Okay, so you can see that light being cast on here and it doesn't look unrealistic to me. This looks like it is being cast here. If you're looking at this, you think where, the, where is the light coming from? It must be from here. If you wanted to, you could always turn it and add some light coming cast onto here as well. But in general, I think that looks quite nice. So let's check that with the new cushion. And I think that's looking pretty good. I would probably say that this is being pretty close to um, completion. So I'm going to move now on to the kitchen scene. So let's just see how this kitchen is looking. Uh, cameras and kitchen shot. So it's very black. There's not much going on here. So we want to add some more lights going in over here and then let's add the details as well. So the first thing I want to start working on is always going to be the lighting. I want to see how the lighting works in the scene. So I'm going to go over to here. I'm going to go to lighting. I'm just going to look at some ceiling pendants and I already know I'm going to go for this one. So I'm going to click on this object here and append that in. Oh, bring that down. Now this is a really nice light and it will also cast light onto the reflections on the, on these areas too. So that's one thing that we want to make sure we don't lose. Let's bring this to the ceiling. Down. Okay, and that's just like a stopper air point that goes in and holds that part of the light up. Okay, I'm going to set this to 4800 and I'm going to turn it on, on off, um, and then that should add some light in over there. Okay, that's cool. And then I'm just going to see how this looks from the living room shot because we should get to see some. There we go. So we see the reflections over here, which is a nice touch. And I think that's cool. So now let's work on the other lights. Again, it's too dark over here. Okay, so after some experimentation, I ended up resorting to this light here. Um, it's got quite a wide spread, but, and I've also lowered these a little bit. So what I wanted it to do, I probably wanna bring that down a little bit more, these portals. Um, I want it to just cast some nice light on this wall here as if it's, you know, it's the same light direction as these ones, very roughly. Uh, so it's casting some light here. Um, and I think that's probably fine. The next one is the lighting for the the kitchen. I will actually make these lights come with the kitchen, um, but basically what I'm going to do is just add some area lights underneath here, so to simulate LEDs in the light in the in the kitchen. As this will be part of the model, I'm not going to go over this part exactly, but I'll be back in a second to show you the end result. Okay, so this is what I've ended up with. Again, I've got a um, black body and I've set this to 4,800 and I've just added these underneath here. Probably move this over a little bit more. And underneath every single shelf, there is gonna be a light. So that should add some really nice lighting here. And again, we can already see that we're getting that nice um, aesthetic, which we're going for in the other scene. And now the lighting is done, I wanna now work on some of the more furniture items, some of the bigger items, and then work down to the smaller items again. So the most important thing for me is um, this area here, and then I'm gonna add something small over here. So I'm gonna add a, a clothing rack here, and then some chairs, and I'm probably gonna add a chair here, and yeah, we'll see how that works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a I'm going to add a lounge chair, so let's um, 
add a, my cursor here and just append that into the scene. And then let's rotate this. It is a little bit too big and using artistic license, let's just re reduce it a little bit. And we just wanna see the leading edge here because this has a really nice detail. So that's the only thing that's important here. And then I wanna add some chairs here and then the back area. So let's add a chair. And I already know this is the one I wanna go for. It's again, it has a similar kind of color going on here, but I'm probably gonna change the back wood a little bit, but this actual vibe of this chair is what I'm really digging. So let's append that in. And let's move this over here like this. I might make the chair just a little bit narrower. And then I'm gonna do Alt D and rotate this over like this. Let's turn off render preview. Okay, and then let's add in a couple more here. And I think that's fine. One thing that's always nice to do with chairs is just to make them a little bit off, not make them 100% perfect. Okay, now for the actual wood, I am gonna change this a little bit because I do think that the wood is just a little bit too dark. Yeah, because as you can see here, the wood is too dark. So I'm gonna I'm gonna choose a lighter wood. Go to the IMS Asset Manager. I'm gonna go to Woods and let's see if there's one which I think looks quite nice. Um, I'm probably gonna go for wood 35. Let's import this material. And then let's select this wood. And then let's give it this material instead. Okay, now that's already lighter and we can already see the effect going on here. I think that the string also has a bit too much color. So I'm just gonna reduce that a little bit to 0.5 and maybe increase the value to like two. So now the the, the string is also gonna be like a similar color to here, but it should be in, in general terms, all matching. Right, so now let's work on the back wall. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. Uh, for these items here, what I've actually done is I've actually given this one a whiter material and this one is also a, a lighter material because I didn't want any color information going in uh, from these particular objects. I wanted it to be all in harmony, so that's what I've ended up going for. So they are like the blocking items. I do think we need some maybe some more light here. So I'm gonna add that more light in here and then I'm gonna just fill these shelves with plates and things and then also add a sink so a tap and then maybe some decorations here i think we actually released some decorations recently which would work really nice here so i think this one would it's literally the same colors so i'm going to go for this one maybe drop in add half here and half over here then i'll add area area light and then i'll be back in a second okay so this is now populated we now have uh, another pampas because i think that's also going in in uh, working quite well with the rest of the scene. Um, I've also changed some of the materials in this one. So I've made it so that the the wood itself, the sticks and the pampas itself is gonna be whiter because there was too much color in there. And I've also given the material on this object here. I made it more of a white material than what it already was. And then for the highlighting light, so again, there's no color information, it's just gonna be white, but it's just gonna be a nice highlight. That should be enough over here. And it's gonna be facing towards these chairs to, um, to bring some nice light over here. Now, you might be thinking, oh, but that's unrealistic because uh, there's no actual window here, but that doesn't matter. So imagine a photographer has come into the scene, uh, they're finding that they don't have enough light on these objects, they are gonna bring their own light anyway. So that isn't 100% unrealistic. And I'm sure your client, if you show them such a render, they're gonna be like, wow, this is amazing. They might say, um, this is too bright and we can darken it. But in general, for this specific render, I think it looks great. So that's what I'm gonna go for. The next thing I want is maybe a bit more of a light on this uh, Pampas here, uh, but the rest of the items are really working quite nicely. One thing I did over here is that this tap was actually uh, rotated like this like straight, which is, is a bit hard to get any context of what it actually is. So just rotated it a little bit so now we can actually see it's a tap. Um, but yeah, for the light on the Pampas, 
uh, what I'm going to do is just let's just duplicate this one, make it a bit smaller. Uh, I'm going to make this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, uh, I'm going to make it focus onto the pampas itself. Um, you can also set these to discs if you prefer, um, it doesn't make too much of a difference. And I'm going to set this to 40, so now there's a bit more of a focus light on that. So if I move this out of the way, we can see it's darker. If I bring it back, it's just a little bit, little bit lighter. So that's nice. Okay, so one thing that I'm really noticing with this right now, <laughs> along with the ceiling, which is looking pretty disgusting, is that this chair has a very strange color to it in this particular scene. I don't think it matches this color and it doesn't really match other colors in the room. So this is more going into the green direction, but it would be nice if it was going into the more of the red direction. So we can see if we can tweak that a little bit. Um, so let's have a look here. So there's, this is the color. Okay, so is that going to affect the color here? Okay, that is affecting the color. So let's uh, bring that back. And then let's just bring this over here like this. I think that might already, that might actually be all that we need. Okay, yeah, I think that actually works perfect. So I think that looks closer to this. Maybe you can desaturate a little bit, um, but I think that's working pretty nicely. I'm probably going to leave that there for now. I think this tutorial was also already incredibly long, but I hopefully you get some idea of some concepts that we're going for. Okay, so this is going to be the final room. I've just gone into the camera view for now just to get an immediate impression of what I can see. So the first thing that's coming to mind is the reason why I put this camera here is to see the reflections. The problem is the reflections are black and white, but we want to actually see the reflections. So what I'm going to do is go to the World tab. Um, I don't actually have a reflection saturation value here, so it shouldn't be too difficult to make. Just add it onto the end. So let's add a mix shader and let's plug that in here and then add a light path node. And then we say, is this a glossy ray? If it is yes, then that will be um, with color. If it is not, then that's going to be the black and white. So basically, all the reflections um, coming through here will be with color, but the rest of the scene will still be illuminated with the same lighting as we had before. So that won't really change. If you think that that is a bit too oversaturated, that green is a bit overpowering, you can add a hue saturation node here and then just reduce that a little bit if you want to. But I'm probably gonna leave that for one for now and then maybe adjust it later in uh, post-production if I want to. But I do feel like these colors are a bit overpowering right now, but that it doesn't help. It's not help that the rest of the scene is very monotone, but let's see if we can bring out some more colors in here. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a carpet with um, maybe some shoes, because shoes for some reason always work nicely in the bedroom. Somebody's just walked in and getting ready for bed. Uh, so let's add a furniture detail, let's add a carpet. And let's move this over here like this. And then let's also add some clothing. Again, all part of the iMesh collection. And we can see how easy it is to make visualizations. I do genuinely think that if you're looking to get into ArcFizz, that this is probably one of the best investments. I don't mean to like blow my own trumpet, but <laughs> I do think that for the library that we're offering for such a price is basically unheard of. Um, so yeah, anyway, something like this. Maybe these are too similar. So let's just rotate one a little bit, add some more variation. Somebody's just kick them off. Just rotate this a little bit like this. Uh, so this one, maybe like that. Yeah, I'm trying to see how these are working together, but I don't know if this is too close or if it should be closer. But I think some edge so we can see this edge here would be nice. Um, I also want to make sure that the focal point is here and it looks like it is. And okay, so I think that should be fine. And like I said, I want to add some sort of plant here. So as this will be an outdoor scene, let's go to plants outdoor. And um, I think that this one is probably one that I'm going to go for. I think something with a bit of color would be nice because it is such a monotone scene. Um, Let's add that in. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this over here. Now, this is going into the floor. Now, that is one thing that you need to take into consideration is what is the purpose of this scene? Is it for a client? Does it need to be 100% accurate? 
If yes, then you would probably want to move this off a little bit and maybe have it so it is possible to be in a pot. But as this is actually, is that better? <laughs> uh, I quite liked it how it was here, but now I'm thinking it might be better over here. Hmm. I think maybe a bit of both. So I think that would be quite nice to be honest. And let's move this away from the thing. Now the idea of this is to be out of focus, add some color and um, make it so that this corner isn't completely bare. And I think that will work quite nice. Okay. Now this is a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna add another beauty light here. Let's just turn off the rendering. Maybe lower value and set this to something like 40. So this should be a nice highlight onto this plant, I reckon. Okay, yeah, that's already, you can already see the immediate difference here. So let's, if I bring this off, it's dark and bring it back. There's some nice highlights. So this leaf also has some nice glossiness and reflections, which is being lost. So if I bring this back, we can then see some reflections here. Another thing to note, it's because we have an area light here and an area light here, we might be seeing those in the reflection. So what I'm gonna do is go over to here and set this to turn off the transmission and the glossy. So that's no longer being affected. This is actually a light which I only really want to add diffuse light into the scene. So it is not too important for me not to have these turned on, but that you could probably leave that one on there if you want to. It's not too overpowering, but I don't think it was too accurate. So I think that's fine. And then the final detail, this wall is a bit too plain. So you can, you can, you can either add a piece of artwork, you can add some, some planks. So if you follow my other tutorials, you know that I'm a huge fan of adding planks. So let's just do that now. Let's just add a mesh cube. Now I want to give this the same material as the wall, but you can also give it like a wood material. Let's select everything, unwrap. And then the, the edges are too sharp, so let's add a bevel. Let's add a little light bevel. If you want to smooth it, you want to make sure that you have a shading, harden normals, and then turn on auto smooth. Okay, there we go. And we might want to also adjust the UVs, but I'm not going to go into that too much now. But I reckon saying that to a scale of five should be fine. And yeah, let's see how that looks. Okay, I think for that, that's gonna be wrapped up. I think that's gonna be fine. I'm, I'm just gonna get onto the rendering because this is uh, already dragging on quite long, but the main concepts here are, are, are correct. So the camera is facing into this room. There is depth of field that's quite strong. Maybe it's too strong, um, but it's going into this room so that the focus is on the, the edge of this chair and this area here. So there's some story going on here with some nice interest. So there's a, there's a definite focal point of this camera and that is the main focus. Uh, maybe it is too dark here and maybe a lighter frame would be more appropriate, but I think right now that is fine. Let's just check out the other cameras. And this is the main living room shot. Again, this ceiling is too strong. So let me just let me just actually add a mix RGB and set this to, I know, a value of like this. So it's gonna be quite rough actually. Something like this. But yeah, so this general shot I'm really liking. The curtains add a nice way to break up this uh, area. The, the glass itself is quite black. So if you were to peek through it, you can see that there is a difference in the, in the lighting. And um, this whole setup I think is just working really nicely. So I think this works really well. And then for the kitchen shot, I think that all works nicely too. Now, the one thing to take into consideration here is I think this shot and the living room shot are closer together um, in terms of color, but there is definitely some colors that are missing. So this one, it has a lot more reds and um, terracotta colors going on, but the living room shot doesn't. So you might be worth bringing in some terracotta into some of these areas. And then also in the bedroom, I think that one is the most different from the others, but that does have the terracotta here. But I think in general, they are close enough together to work. But if you want to make these renders all work together even better, that is with post-production. So that is what I'm going to get onto next. You can, of course, tweak the colors, add some more light onto the background, make make it 
so that the renders are closer together and do share more colors. Um, but I'm gonna move on to the post-production side now. Okay, I've just come back to this and I thought that it could do with one final detail before I start rendering it. And that would be a light that sits into this little, little section in the top. Now, this is not entirely necessary, but I thought that it just adds a nice little touch up here. I always think I always think these kind of glows look pretty nice. Again, I've set the value to 4,800 because they are not highlighting lights, but more of actual artificial lights. Um, as for lighting values, these two here have the same value of two. Uh, I gave this one at the back, which runs along here, the same value of two, but I found that the perceived light value, because it's going through the corrugated section, was a lot less. So I've set that to a value of 10, and now the perceived brightness of that light all looks the same, and it looks like this light is continuing along. So that, I feel like, finishes off that section really nicely, and now I'm probably gonna render it. Hopefully I don't see anything else that I wanna change, but that should be fine for now. Okay, so when you get to finally to rendering, uh, you will be very limited to your VRAM on your GPU if you're doing GPU rendering, which I'm sure most of you are. I have an eight gigabyte uh, GPU down here, um, which we can see, and that is what I imagine most users will have. If you have less VRAM, then things can get a little bit more difficult and you'll just need to optimize things a lot more. Your best friend in the whole wide world it is gonna be the simplify tab and turning that on and making it set to texture limit. So setting, I'll basically set this to 2K. I set this to 2K in my test renders and it looked perfectly fine. There are certain details such as the um, wood floor, which could have been better with a 4K texture, but I will promise you that if you go too low, it doesn't make too much of a difference. If you try to remember, this is gonna be rendering at roughly about 2K when I'm finished with it. So that full scene is 2K. So if you have, imagine, your 2K texture is this big on this sofa, you're not gonna see the difference in, in texture size, but the texture limit adds considerable detail to the VRAM. Another thing to take into consideration is the amount of textures that there are actually in the scene. So for example, in here, in each of these objects, which are hidden behind one bit of glass, two bits of glass, is are some clothing. So let's just hide this. There's some clothes here. So each of these clothes have one, two, three, four textures. We won't see any of these. The only thing we might see is the diffuse. So we can very easily just remove all of these, plug in the diffuse and be done with it. Now there's only one texture and I guarantee you're not gonna see the difference. The same for this object here. So this object is has a clear coat material and it has some glossiness and normal maps. It has two, two principal shaders. Uh, so we can just remove all of these we're not gonna see any difference, I can guarantee. You can do some before, after uh, renders if you like, but this has already saved a considerable amount of VRAM by removing these. The same for this one, just go through all of these objects in the back and just remove all of the unnecessary textures. At this distance between these glass, you're not gonna see any detail other than the diffuse map. Just make sure that your glossiness values are roughly about correct and it will, it will look fine. Of course, if you have more VRAM, go crazy, but we are limited, unfortunately, in Blender uh, with VRAM. Uh, coming from uh, Corona and V-Ray, uh, when we mostly render on CPU, you are not limited in whatsoever, and we can just throw everything at it until you run out of your computer's RAM, which can be 64 to 128 gigabytes or more. So that is one thing to take in consideration. As for the actual render size, I will be rendering at 200% uh, of this. Uh, rendering at higher percentages is actually better for the denoiser. So what you can do is if you set this to 200%, you can then lower your sample count by four. So if you do divide by four, you can lower it by four because basically, oops, if you double these values, you will be increasing the size four times. So if you decrease that by four, you can still get a very beautiful render. I think that the denoisers are actually trained on higher resolution images, so they perform a lot better. And there's just generally a lot more a lot more information in those renders, so you can get away with lower sample counts. Uh, but for the actual, for this actual render, I will be going higher. And I just want to preface that I've set the noise threshold to 0.01. So that I think if that's correct, that is 1% noise. So I want to wait until the the image has rendered uh, so much until there's only 1% noise left, or it will hit 4,096 4, samples. So for certain areas, let's say you have a perfectly white table here, this might hit 1% noise before this pampas grass. So when this bit has finished rendering and it's hit its 1% noise threshold, it will then stop rendering and it can then focus on other objects instead. So I've set it to say 
if it doesn't hit the 1% noise th one percent noise threshold, um, I want it just to keep rendering until it hits 4096 samples. Some of you might think that that is a hell of a lot, and it is. This is gonna be a production ready render. I want this to be as high quality as possible. I want it to be as many samples as necessary so the denoiser doesn't need to do as much work. The denoisers are made by AI and they have mistakes. They will remove detail which should actually be there. So don't give it the opportunity to remove all of that lovely detail and set a very high render time. I see a lot of people doing renders uh, and they say, wow, this rendered in two minutes. And I just say, well, what detail are you losing? Because you're only rendering it for two minutes. Let it render for an hour. If you're not in any rush, just let it render in the background. You know, go to bed, set up all your renders and come back in the morning, you have everything done, but to the max, maximum quality. There is a big problem I see in, in Blender users 100% relying on the on the denoisers and I just really need people to get away from this. The renderer is doing its best job to most, make the most realistic render as possible. If you then completely destroy it by adding a denoiser on top, you're just removing all of that lovely detail. So that is the detail which I'm gonna use. If of course it's gonna take three, four hours to render and you don't have the time, then probably don't do that. And also if it is probably gonna take three to four hours, then there's a good chance that you probably need to optimize something anyway, um, but these are my default values. So for this one, I've turned off denoise. This basically means once it's finished rendering, it will apply the denoise onto the image, but I want to have more control. So if I go to the compositor, I've added a denoise node here, which can be found here, denoising data. And that basically means that after the render, you can then decide how much of the denoiser you want to apply to it. So if I was to add a mix here, and then a mix in the denoise to the final image, I can then say I want it to be the 100% denoised image or I want it to be the 100% noisy image. And so you can just adjust it a little bit. So I often find that 0.75 works quite nicely. So the denoiser can't work too much, but it does take off a lot of the unnecessary noise off of some certain objects. Okay, and if I go down here, so light paths, I've set these all to 32 and for transparent, I set that to 50. Now that's only because I have the pan pass and that will slow down your render quite a lot. So if you set this to a lower value, the pan pass will start to become black because there'll be lots of overlapping transparent planes, which is why you need a higher value. If you go for another plant, you don't necessarily need this. And somebody commented in the previous video, they said if this is set to 32 and you set this to 50, then it will cap at 32. That's not true. Um, the transparent bounces, bounces are independent from the total bounces so that you can set this as high as you like and you're not gonna be capped by this value. So I will set this to 50. Clamping, indirect and direct, I set these both to zero because clamping, it basically reduces the value of the light in the scene, which brings it to be more unrealistic. I want that to just be full lighting, 100% as real as possible. There is a downside to this that it can cause fireflies and you get this, some random specks throughout the scene. But I do find that uh, having a 4,000 samples can get rid of that. But if you are having problems, set this to a value like 10 or set this to a value like three if you're having a lot of problems. But generally I don't seem to have too much problem if I set this to zero and it will look better. Under film, uh, uh, Blackman Harris, I'd probably set this to 1.1. So the, the lower the value, the more sharper the image gets, but then you can have problem with aliasing where certain edges, if there's high contrast edge, so if one's a bright light and next to a very dark object, you can get jagged edges. So be wary of that, but I do find that for ArcViz, a lower value is quite pleasant. Now, a, another uh, interesting thing to check is also persistent data. So let's say I want to render uh, each frame. So I, maybe I set up a one camera to render, the next camera to render, and following the next camera to render. I will probably enable persistent data. That means that every time it goes to the next render, it keeps hold of all the information and just moves on to the next camera without having to do all the calculations all over again. And that is very useful. So I'm gonna leave that enabled and make sure that you've also got it set to, to Filmic. In terms of the uh, render passes, these are the render passes which I have enabled. In this particular render, I'm not gonna be going into light groups and light groups are part of the uh, lights themselves. We can add them to a certain group. So when the render has totally finished, you can then have additional render passes. So you can just highlight these lights, for example, and then get a render pass just with those lights. So then you can do some mixing afterwards to adjust the values if you want to. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that in this tutorial. I think it's already quite a long. So uh, I'm gonna ignore that for now, but you can enable those. But I think just for this video, I think I'm not gonna to go too much into these. I think that these uh, 
these are probably fine maybe set the indirect glossy enabled and we can mix that in later if we want to but i think i think that's probably fine in my previous tutorial i have also gone over um, more into the render passes so do check out the archviz tutorial too if you're interested in that but that is probably fine okay so that's probably fine for the render passes and render settings the next okay so the next thing i want to do is also go through and make sure i do some cleanup so basically certain objects are not seen by certain cameras so i want to make sure that those objects are hidden when they're not necessarily going to be seen so what you can do is just select all of these objects that are going to be in certain cameras and then move them to certain collections such as kitchen and then later on you can hide them from certain cameras if you need to um, and then you can do that for all the rooms so for this particular camera we won't be able to see anything that's in the living room so if we select all of these objects here we can move all of these into the living room shot and then we can just turn that off oops and then we can just turn that off when it's not being seen so if we go over here it makes no difference here and then that saves on vram and it should make things a bit render a bit quicker okay so that is now everything set up and i think we're ready to render what you can do if you wanted to was set certain cameras onto certain frames and set it to render as an animation uh, so it just does one after the other you can also move things to certain scenes so that they all render one scene after the next but i'm going to save that for another tutorial i don't know some people are going to be commenting that saying there should there's a way to automate that and there definitely is but there's no harm in just rendering one go to the next camera turning off certain things and rendering that camera okay so i'm going to render that and once that's done i'm going to move over to photoshop okay so i'll come back to this a few days later and this is the final output from the last image which i rendered and we can also see that i've also done the living room sorry the, the kitchen and we've also done the bedroom and i've also saved these out as a tiff and it's very important to save these out as a tiff so if you go to file uh, save as on the render and make sure you set it to tiff and 16 bit that's to make sure that you have as much data as possible if you do have some alpha information that you want to take into consideration then you can also tick that box too but this for me are the settings which i used in the compositor which can be found here all i did was make sure that i've had i enabled the denoise node which is found like this just denoise make sure you leave it as accurate and leave this one enabled because that makes it as accurate as possible and then when the final image rendered i just plug this in like this and then i save the output okay and then with that saved all i'm going to do now is go over to photoshop okay now that we are inside photoshop the reason why i like photoshop is because i like the camera raw filter which which can be found here and camera raw filter because that walks you through all the steps for editing and you can do most of the editing that you need to get the image finished of course there are other steps which you could take later but i'm just going to go over this for now because it's so powerful and you can really pull out your image and make take it to the next level just with this filter if you're using affinity photo that also has very similar tools but i will be using photoshop for now and i'm sure you can translate the edits which i do over to affinity photo i believe affinity photo is about 30 or 40 dollars for life so if you're on a budget that's definitely way to go but i really like photoshop so i'll be continuing with that so the first thing i'm going to do now is after i drag this image into here it says background but what i want to do is turn that to a smart object so now that's a smart object if i have if i was to do any edits for example if i click camera raw filter and then if i click ok it then saves that here so then i can go back into the camera raw filter later to make the edit if i do not do that then the edit which I create is going to be baked into the image and then I cannot go back and change things. So you always make sure that the image which you're editing is a smart object. Okay, so in the camera raw filter, we can see here that it's just a list of edits which you can do. And then there are some also some more tools up here which are very, very helpful and which we will be using a bit later. So the basic section, I won't be touching this too much, but that's very helpful for changing the temperature and some of the light values and also some vibrance and saturation values i'll be using this just a little bit here i think mostly i'm just going to turn down the exposure just very very slightly because i'll be bringing out some of the other lights in the highlights i think that this as a value of zero is probably going to be fine and let's just maybe turn up some contrast just a little bit these highlights and these sections i'm going to do in the curves so i think that's probably fine for now I might just turn down the vibrance a little bit okay so it's not too much of an edit but that should be fine for now Okay, so I'm just going to minimize that and go to curves. So if we look at this graph, we can see that this area over here are for the highlights, and this over here are for the shadows. So we can see most of the image is in this shadow area, 
but not much of the image is in the lights. So if I was to adjust the lights, we can see that it makes quite a big difference, but nothing too crazy. If I was to adjust the darks, we can see it makes a much bigger impact because that's where most of our colors are. I'm gonna use this section a bit more lightly and I will adjust the lights even more because I have a bit more room here. So what I'm gonna do here is first start with the highlights. So the highlights are referring to literally the highlights. So if we look at all these lights here, if I turn this up to the max, we can see that the highlights are brought out and the shadows kind of makes it go very flat. The good thing with being a TIFF is that we do have a lot of information, but we are losing some information down at the lowest highlights. But what I'm gonna do is just bring this up just a little bit like this, because I think that the this area, which is gonna be the most focal point of the image, I want that to be highlighted more. And then if I bring up the lights, we can see that it's mostly affecting this area down here as well. So let's just bring this up like this. So now we have a nice highlight here and I think that's working well. The darks, like I said, I just wanna be very careful with these, but I wanna bring those down just a little bit and the same for the blacks. Okay, so we can see here that this area is now starting to pop out and the rest is starting to get quite black. Um, these areas are also very, very black. So I think I'm gonna try to bring those back a little bit. And the way to do that is I would use this adjustment brush. So this brush, you can basically brush on any of these effects. So if, for example, if I set this to temperature minus 100 and paint onto here, we can see it getting very cold in those areas, which actually looks pretty cool to be fair. So what I wanna do is because I want to make mainly bring back the highlights, I'm just gonna bring back the exposure, something like this, and then I can paint on where I want the bright areas to be. So we can see that these areas are coming back and it doesn't look unnatural. It really does look like the lights are creating that. And I think that maybe this area is just a bit too dark. So let's just paint a bigger brush on here like this. And I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so these area, these highlighted areas are looking pretty good, um, but I also wanna add some highlighted areas to the back. Now, if I was to click now, I would be creating a brand new brush and that's what I want. If this was red, that means I'm gonna be adding to that same brush. But because I wanna edit this area separately, I'm gonna go over to here and make sure that this is white and then I'm gonna add a brand new brush. So if I right click and just do this and then I can paint in some light over here, maybe some light over here and that's making that area brighter. So now I can adjust this separately to the other highlights I just painted on. But I think something like that is quite nice. Okay, and now another thing that I'm noticing is that these are very red and there's no other red in the image. So, so this is really popping out to me. So I wanna reduce this redness here. So I'm gonna make sure I have a new brush selected. And I'm gonna paint over here, over these red areas. We can see that it's getting very bright because it still has the exposure value turned on, but I'm gonna turn that down in a second. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use the rubber and maybe just remove it from these curtains. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this exposure down. So that should be look like there's no edits at all. And then I can also just adjust the hue, maybe bring it more into the oranges so that it's more like the lights themselves. Maybe just very, very little. Okay, and then I'm gonna just turn down the saturation. Something like this, but maybe I might add a bit more here. Okay, so now we've removed most of those red areas. There is still a little bit of color there, but it's not too crazy. The rest of the image is, is very black and white, so that fits in better now rather than that red. Okay, so my computer was completely failing to keep up with the recording for some reason, and after editing it, I realized that it was basically unusable footage. So there's a section now which I'm gonna to try to re-record, and then I'm gonna continue on from where I was recording previously. Okay, so from this point, what I wanna do is maybe add some more highlights here. So I'm gonna make a new brush. I'm gonna go over to here and just paint in some highlights here. Maybe take some off of this dog. Let's maybe make this a bit bigger, let's make it a bit softer. I think it'll be just be nice to have some highlights on the side of this bed. Okay, and then what I wanna do is, I can see that these blacks are just way too black. So I'm gonna click on this one, which I've already done. Then we're gonna to go to shadows and just try to bring that up a little bit. And we can see that, we can now see the detail on this section. So bring that up. Yeah, something like that is nice. I think that's way better than this because things are getting lost. You would not be able to do this without a tiff. You need some 
you need an image which can hold a lot of information so this is a good thing with that file format okay now that's done I'm gonna go back to edit and go to detail so for detail what I want to do is add some sharpening so when you're adding sharpening what you want to make sure is you find a part which is already the most part in focus and then adjust the sharpening there. If you try to adjust the sharpening for an object which is already out of focus, then you're just gonna end up sharpening far too much because you're trying to sharpen the wrong part of the image. So I'm gonna to go to this section here. Oops. And this part is meant to be in focus. So what I'm gonna do is just put this up to something like 36. And I think that is enough. You don't wanna to go too crazy because that really hurts your eyes, uh, but just enough to bring out their edges a little bit like that. And I think that looks pretty nice. The next thing I wanna do is the color mixer. Okay, now for the color mixer, I've just reset the values back to what it was, and I'm gonna talk you through this. So what I wanna do is you can adjust the brightness, the saturation, and the hue of different colors in the image. And it's really helpful to use this button here. So let's say that you think that this green could be brighter. You go to luminance, click on this button, and find the green that you like and then you can bring this to the, to the right and it's brighter, bring it to the left and it's darker. Now this is very subtle because these this color is not very saturated anyway, but you can make it a bit brighter and it kind of makes this section in the middle here a bit brighter, which is quite nice. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to saturation. I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. And for hue, if I bring this to the right, it's gonna make it more blue. If I bring it to the left, it's more yellow. So. I think the yellow is very much in line with the image, but I think that's just far too much. So it would be nice to have a little bit of green left. So let's go something like this. And I think that's gonna be fine for now. Okay, now going to effects, what I wanna affect here is the vignette. And that adds a ring around the image, which can always really help with focus the image into the middle. So I'm gonna bring this down just very lightly, something like this. And then you can adjust the, the midpoint. And in this case, I don't want the ring to be so close to the middle. So I'm gonna bring this out to something like here. And then you can also adjust the, the feather amount if you want to. So this is very sharp or you can soften it up a little bit. So I reckon something like this should be fine. And I think that those are all the edits I'm gonna do for now for using the camera raw filter. Hopefully this is very similar to what I had done just a second ago, but I'm re-recording it. So anyway, I'm gonna continue on from where I left off. Okay, so I've gone online and I found a glare image, which looks like this. If you search for glares or lens, lens flares, you'll be able to find some images which look like this. So I've just grabbed one and I'm gonna bring it over to my light and I'm going to set that to screen. There we go. And I'm gonna make sure that's centered over, oops. I'm gonna make sure that's centered over the image centered over the light, sorry. Okay, and then I'm gonna reduce that, maybe it's something like 50, so we can actually see the light as well. Okay, we can also bring that up just a little bit more. Okay, then I'm gonna duplicate that, and to do that, you just click and drag, and drag that over to this button here, and then that would duplicate it. So I'm gonna bring that over to here. Okay, and then we have some glares, which are a lot nicer than you'll ever get out of Blender. Um, and they still look very natural. So actually, let's make sure that these are definitely centered. Okay, and then we can also add them on other bits. So our, so when there are like specific highlights like these, where they're very, very bright, we can just bring those down here like this. And maybe onto the top of this dog. And then do Control T and then just make it a bit smaller. just to add a nice highlight onto that dog. And that's how I do my lights. So you can render these out and try to use the flares and stuff inside a blender, but, and I just find it a lot easier. And I genuinely think that these lens flares that you can get online just look way more accurate. So that's what I'll be using here. Okay, and the next thing I wanna do is try to give this an Instagrammy vibe. And that would be basically by bringing up the blacks so the blacks are not too strong. And it kind of looks like a fade, I think is what Instagram calls it. But as this is gonna be like a portfolio piece and a bit more artistic, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to emulate that effect. So at the top of here, I'm gonna click on this button and click on curves. Now to do that, what you can do is just slide this up and then you're telling it that the blacks the lowest black value is gonna be this value. So bring this to the top. The lowest, the lowest black value is gonna be white. So that means the whole image is gone. So I wanna bring up just 
it to something like this, but we can see that it's adjusting the whole image. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna bring up just this bottom area here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find maybe the biggest point here and click, make, click here. But then if I was to do the same again, it still adjusts the whole image. It already looks a bit more appealing, but it's still not quite right. So I'm gonna add another point like over here, and then that will keep this curve in line. And then if I was to adjust this, we can see that I'm now only adjusting just the black areas. So I'm gonna do that very lightly, something like this. So now if I do this, we can see that these blacks look a lot more appealing here. So if I go into the Monstera plant, we can see these black areas are very, these black areas are very black, but if I do this, they get lightened. And I generally think that's quite a nice aesthetic. And that's kind of the aesthetic which I kept seeing on all of my references. So that's the image, that's what I'm gonna go for here. Okay, now that image is just looking quite good. I think that it might be too dark at this point. So I'm gonna go back to the camera raw filter and I'm gonna to go to the curves and I might just bring up the, these bits. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I think that if I was to re-render this, I'd give this area just a bit more light. Okay, and I think that one more effect, which I think could look quite nice, is to give this plant a bit more light. So one way to do that is that you can create a mask inside a blender but I haven't done that, so I'm just gonna quickly paint over the top. So I'm gonna select this camera raw filter, add a new brush, and I'm gonna go over to the plant. Then with the exposure toned up, I'm just gonna paint over here like this, very roughly. And then adjust this something like this, and then I'm just gonna remove around the edges. The good thing with these brushes is that they always look still very accurate, even if it's just quite rough. Okay, so that gives a nice glow to this Pampas plant. Okay, and another thing which I think could be a bit brighter are these curtains. So these curtains are, are getting very lost into the background, but I think that they should stand out a little bit more. So over here, they blend very much into the ceiling. So I'm gonna do a cutout here, and then I'm going to edit it. So I'm gonna be back in a second while I cut this out. Okay, now with these selected, again, I would recommend that you go onto YouTube and search for how to create masks inside of Blender. But just for now, I've just done this a very rough cutout, but this should be good enough for this tutorial. So with that selected, I'm just gonna go to, see, I'm gonna click on this button here and click on levels. Then I can just bring this up and bring up the brightness for these curtains. So I'm just gonna go like very roughly like this. And I think that already looks a lot better. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this down below the curves because that will look a lot more natural up here. So that looks better already. Again, I would just make sure that you go round and make sure that your your masks are correct. Um, I think I've just done it very roughly right here. Okay, now I can see that there's actually a mistake in the render itself. And let's say you don't have time to re-render it because this curtain is going through the wall. You can actually fix it quickly inside of Photoshop using this stamp tool over here on the left. So I'm gonna make a new layer just above the edit, the main edit. I'm gonna set the stamp tool to current and below. And then if I hold down the Alt button and right click, I can bring this down like this. I'm gonna click on a point maybe here and just paint that in. Now we can see that these points are disappearing. Something like this. The good thing is that curtains generally have a lot of wrinkles and creases. So I can just reuse these pieces. There are some duplications happening here, but that already looks better than the mistakes anyway. Okay, so if I do before and after, we can see that I've just fixed all of those pieces and that looks a lot better. 
Okay, so I think that's probably fine for now. I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to move over quickly to the next image. So we have these layers here. So this whole section here is for that image itself. This is like a beauty pass over the top, which I might want to reuse for the other images. So what I'm going to do is select these ones here and then click on this button to put it into a layer. And I'm going to call that living room. And if you right click on the folder, you can set this to a certain color like red. And then what I want to do is then add a new image. So if I drag this into here, there we go. And we can see that it's already picking up that layer, which is nice. And just to see how this is gonna look, because I have already done some edits, I can drag these edits onto the new image here. So if I was to click on the smart filters, hold down the Alt button, click and drag, you can drag that onto here. You can see how that's gonna look. Okay, now with this dragged onto this one, it's very, very bright in certain areas. And that's because we also brushed on certain exposure values. So if I double click onto here, we can go over to the brush section and just delete those brush entries that I created because those are not gonna be the same for this image. And that looks a lot nicer. Okay, now with those brushes removed, I think that looks a lot nicer, but we do wanna color in some more bright areas. So what I'm gonna do is go to the bright section. And so this part I think can be highlighted a bit more. I also think that this, this can be and this bit as well. Perhaps we can add some bright areas over here because this is getting very dark. And maybe over here, because this is a focus. There is already a lot of light over here, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. Okay. And because we've already done those other edits, so there's the vignette, there's the, there's the sharpening and all those other details, and I think that's looking pretty good. And if I click okay. Okay, and I think that this is looking pretty good. I think that this is looking quite in line with this other image over here. I think that it would be nice if there was more terracotta colors in this image, like I said earlier, because this is kind of feeling like a slightly different image over here, but it does still have a similar kind of vibe in terms of the lighting and the focal areas. So it's a very beauty kind of render that maybe your clients wouldn't like something which is as artistic, but it definitely has some sort of wow factor. Now, one thing which I didn't really mention while creating the scene is that I didn't really bevel these edges on the walls, but you can do that, but I found that in the past, the amount of times where I beveled the, edge, beveled the edges, then I needed to separate the floor or the ceiling for certain reasons, and then the bevel gets really strange. Then you can get light leaks in these corners. Um, so I just left it off for this tutorial, but if you want to bevel these edges, I would recommend it because it does look more realistic because these are very, very sharp. But as these are in the distance, they are, get, they are getting blurred anyway, and there are some denoising artifacts anyway, so you can't quite tell that they are super sharp, but that is something I think that you wanna take care of. Also over here, there is some aliasing happening here. So this is a very sharp contrasted area. So this doesn't look so appealing. So you might wanna blur these edges to make that a bit softer. If you wanted to, you can also inside of Blender add a glare node and then plug that in, and that would have probably saved this point over here. But I think just for this tutorial, I think that that is fine. So we can also see here the point which I was kind of aiming for in terms of the wall texture, that the light areas where the light is reflecting, you can see that the wall isn't completely smooth. So there is some nice textures going on in the wall, which is often something that is missed. And um, also in the ceiling, there is just a very light texture. Nothing too crazy, but, they do, but there's definitely a texture on the ceiling. So nothing is too smooth. And as I rendered this image as a texture size of 2K, we can actually see that the floor might do with being a higher resolution, but it's so subtle that it might not necessarily make any difference, but it allowed us to render more objects anyway. And then what you would do now is then move over to the final image, which is the bedroom. If I was to do the same thing, I would just literally drag in the, drag this in and simply grab this filter, hold down the Alt button, drag this on and see how that looks. I think that looks pretty fine. I think that this green is way too overpowering, so that's something that I would adjust. But by copying the camera raw filter, it's given us a very good starting point, just like before. Okay, and I think that's probably it for now. I really enjoyed making this render. I really enjoyed finding these references and trying to find a specific style that I was going for. And I hope that this has given you some good ideas of the kind of quality that you can get out of Cycles. I think people think that Cycles is free and you can't get good quality, but this is absolutely a production ready and professional grade render. Um, I hope that this has inspired you to make some of your own kind of renders. And if you ever have any questions, do mention, do try to mention it in the comments. Um, of course, like I said, it was very hard for me to try to cover every single specific detail. Um, so I'm sorry if I missed certain things, but hopefully this has just given you a good idea of at least some starting points. 
Okay, and if you're watching this video about Black Friday time, then we do have a Black Friday offering of $75 for the whole entire library. Um, if you're not watching this at Black Friday time, then do read the description because we might do a second offering just for the people who are watching this tutorial. Um, so do read the description. Um, but for now, it is $75, which is for the whole entire library of 1,500 assets at the time of making this video, which will be an insane deal. If you were to get that, that would be $75 divided by, that would be five cents per model if you downloaded the whole entire library, which is actually ridiculous because at most other websites, they would cost you anywhere between like five to seven dollars for the same amount. So that'd be about $7,500 worth of assets. So that's uh, ridiculous. So all you need to do is once you've signed up, you just go to the shop and you can just download any item you like, just hover over it and download anything. We keep this library updated. So every single month there's new models coming out and every single month is not just quick models, but actually also incredible models that you won't be able to get in most other places. We think that some of our models are just incredibly top of the line blender quality stuff. So if you're interested in that, do check out iMesh. Um, it would be probably the best investment you make all year, guaranteed. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I really hope that you guys have learned a lot from this and I hope that it's given you some ideas on how you can make some incredible renders inside of cycles and hopefully push your portfolio to the next level. And really ultimately just to try to make sure you find the clients that you're looking for and trying to make money. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.